Welcome to an exciting day on Comcast Sportsnet Chicago. Today's presentation of Northern Illinois football is the first live event to be presented by Comcast Sportsnet. In the coming months, we'll bring you Pro Sports in HD along with numerous other college events. But today, it's MAC football, Northern Illinois against Akron. And to get things started, here's David Kaplan and Tom Waddle. Thank you, Jim. Good afternoon, everybody. Tommy, as you look at this Northern Illinois Akron game, Northern Illinois is a very good football team. I think Joe Novak feels very good about his football team right now. He gets his veteran quarterback back in the lineup today. And last week against Bowling Green, he found out he had some depth at the tailback position. A.J. Harris goes out with an injury in the first quarter. And this young superstar to be, possibly Garrett Wolf, steps in and promptly rushes for 204 yards on 30-some carries. Scoring runs of 42 yards, 21 yards, 8 yards. He should see the football quite often today against an Akron defense that gives up 235 yards per game on the ground. All right, now when you talk about Akron, this is a team in transition with a brand new coach in J.D. Brookhart, but this is also a team with a very good senior quarterback. No doubt Charlie Fry was a preseason Heisman candidate. He set virtually every offensive record for this Akron football program. He's joined some monster names from the MAC conference in terms of total yardage. It's been a bit of a slow start this season for Charlie Fry, though, because he lost three of his top receivers. He lost his two top rushers and his starting tight end last year due to graduation, and he's now having to learn the West Coast offense. So there have been some bumps along the road, but this is a young man that will definitely play on Sundays next year. All right, so it's Akron at Northern Illinois. Should be an interesting matchup. Stick around. Starting lineups in the kickoff coming up on Comcast Sportsnet Chicago. NIU football is back for more in 2004. Take the short trip to DeKalb to catch head coach Joe Novak's Huskies as they make their bid for a Mid-American Conference Championship. Great seats still available for remaining Husky home football games, including a nationally televised date against Mid-American Conference West Division rival Toledo. NIU football tickets start at just $17. To order your Northern Illinois University football tickets, contact your nearest Ticketmaster outlet or go online at NIUHuskies.com. Hi, I'm Craig Culver of Culver's Restaurants. And here at Culver's, we're heating things up with our delicious new line of grilled melts. They're mouth-watering sandwiches made fresh to order, then grilled up to their hot and tasty. From classic tastes like our Wisconsin Swiss melt and sourdough melt to new favorites like our new Reuben melt. They're a delicious treat that'll melt in your mouth. So come in and try our new Culver's grilled melts. They're always hot, they're always fresh, and only from Culver's. Tuesday, October 12th, the preseason tips off as Kirk Heinrich and the Bulls hit the road to battle the new-look Boston Celtics, followed by Bulls post-game live. Bulls Celtics, Tuesday, October 12th. Get your game on Comcast Sportsnet. Who has the Bulls, Blackhawks, Cubs, and White Sox covered? Comcast Sportsnet. You won't find more games anywhere else, and no one covers your teams like our team. It's the place to go before, during, and after the game. Get your game on Comcast Sportsnet. You're next, Junior. This is Bulls territory, my man. Bulls ain't straight. Not anymore. Got us a real fair weather fan here. So? So? Oh, oh my goodness. Hey, you real fans are loyal to their team. Right on, They're brother. behind the team. Hey, we could be five points down 15 seconds ago. Hey. We'll raise the roof off this place. Real fans love their team no matter what. <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> Pick him, Ben, Junior. Pick him, Ben. <laughs> Yeah, Sportsnet is proud to present Northern Illinois Husky football. Brought to you by U.S. Cellular. We connect with you. By Culver's Frozen Custard and Butter Burgers. America's favorites made fresh. By Casey's General Store. The official convenience store of NIU Athletics. Casey's, a convenience store and a whole lot more. By the Village Commons Bookstore. For all your Husky clothing and souvenirs, visit vcbs.com. By Applebee's. Try Applebee's car side to go. You call it in, we bring it out. By Blaine's Farm and Fleet, the hardest working people in America find value at Farm and Fleet. By Jewel, helping make your life easier. By TCF Bank, open seven days. And by the Comfort Inn and Suites of Rochelle, a great place to stay before or after Husky football games where you will sleep in comfort. And welcome to Husky Stadium. 
Brigham Field on the campus of Northern Illinois University alongside former Bears standout wide receiver Tom Waddle. I'm David Kaplan, and welcome into Comcast Sportsnet's coverage of college football. Tommy, absolutely glorious conditions. This is football weather, my friend. A little nip in the air. The sun is still out. As you see, 57 degrees, northwest winds, 15 to 25 miles an hour. But it is going to be cool and sunny. That's, and to me, that's perfect football weather. That's my meteorologist buddy, Tom Waddle. That should be very interesting. J.D. Brookhart, the head coach at Akron in his first year. Joe Novak has been through the growing pains and has built a very, very well-respected program nationally here at Northern Illinois. Northern won the toss. They defer. They will kick off and go on defense. Chris Nendick will put it on the tee and boot it away, and Akron will take possession first. It'll be Brett Biggs deep and Dante Cloud. Crowd into it. Beautiful, beautiful day. Mendick's kick is going to come down in the end zone just outside the goal line, and they decide to bring it out. And I believe it's Biggs who's going to crash out to about the 18-yard line. Brett Biggs to the 18. Marion Watson in on the tackle. And let's take a look at Charlie Fry. This is a guy the NFL scouts here today to see him. Tommy, one of the top senior quarterbacks in America. We talked about it at the top of the, the program. Charlie Fry, the numbers look pretty good there, but it's been a bit of a slow start for Charlie Fry. As we said, he's learning a new system. He's lost three of his top receivers to graduation. He lost his tight end to graduation. So he's learning a new system with new personnel. Single back set, and it is Brett Biggs. And Charlie Fry is going to go up top on the first play of the game. Complete. So Akron tries to make something happen right off the start to Dominic Hickson. Coverage to Rob Lee, number 27, a standout corner for Northern Illinois. But you'll see Dominic Hickson does have a step, and Charlie Fry just underthrows the football. Good play by Rob Lee to come back in and break up the ball. But you'll see Hickson just shakes him at the line of scrimmage, and now he's playing catch up. The ball's underthrown a little bit. And Rob Lee does come back and make a play, an opportunity for Akron to get on the board early. Now out of the gun, it'll be a second down and 10, and Fry's going to throw the football again. He's going to dump it off to his back pigs. He's across the 20, and a gang of red shirts, and Lionel Hickenbottom laid the boom on Biggs, and the football came loose. Northern's got it. Well, again, Akron's a one-dimensional team right now. They don't run the football exceptionally well. They try to run screen passes, some swing passes as an extension of their running game. And as you see, Hickenbottom, the best defensive back on this team, creates the fumble and a huge swing in momentum early on in this ball game. Right away, a big play. Hickenbottom lowered the boom, and Ray Smith came in and made the recovery so the Huskies on the attack 1434 left first quarter and they have the ball at the 23 yard line of the Akron Zips. Josh Haldy the senior under center and he's going to throw. He is going to the end zone looking for Dan Sheldon. He has got him and it's a touchdown. Give him six. Dan Sheldon touchdown Northern Illinois. Only the second pass of the season for the veteran quarterback Josh Haldy, who has missed the majority of the last four games with a stress fracture in his foot. First play from scrimmage, just a little fake to Garrett Wolf, and he finds his big money receiver, Dan Sheldon, who comes up with the ball. Not so sure he landed in bounds. We'll check it out. Sheldon, the speed receiver, makes the catch. Maybe got his knee in. I think he got a foot down. Nendick's extra point is perfect. And right away, 32 seconds into the ball game, Northern Illinois has a 7-0 lead. Take a look. Did he get a foot down? Absolutely. Touchdown, Northern. We'll be right back. It's 7-0. 
have we got a matchup today. Casey's General Store and Coca-Cola are bringing you the Football Town USA Ultimate Tailgate Party Sweepstakes with prizes galore, including $5,000 for your favorite school. And a personal tailgate kit at every Casey's General Store. Look for the Football Town USA Sweepstakes at Casey's General Store. Where you can pick up a free two liter of Coke with the purchase of any large pizza. Casey's General Stores, a convenience store, and a whole lot more. Hey, Frankie. Bernie. Uh, the uh, new lottery machine, huh? No, this is from 1974. No, I thought I'd show it off for the 30th anniversary. Man, let me check it out. Whoa! One more time. Guess some things never go out of style. Woo! Expect the unexpected, the Illinois Lottery. Have a ball. All right, first completion of the year for Josh Haldy. Tommy, did he get the foot down? He gets the foot down right there. Forgive me for downing Dan Sheldon, but he does a nice job dragging the foot. And as we all know, one foot is good for a catch in college football, but as you say, a huge completion to set the tone of this ballgame for Northern. Now, Brett Biggs normally returns kicks who fumbled the pass, or the uh, play is not in there right now. Don't know if he was shaken up, so you have Dante Cloud and Dominic Hickson who are now deep on this kick for Akron, so we'll have to check on the starting running back. Brett Biggs, but he is not in on this kickoff as he normally would be on their depth chart. Nendick's kick is going to come down right around the five-yard line. It looks like Hickson, the man that has it, tries to turn the corner. He does turn the corner. He is across the 30 to the 36-yard line. Solid return. Let's go down to Jim Blaney. Jim, what were they talking about defensively? Well, David, it's kind of funny because after the turnover, when the defense came off the field, the defenders were yelling to the special teams, kick team, you're going to go right back out there. And then moments later, the first touchdown. So the defense knew something before everybody else did. Back to you. Thanks, Jimmy. That's right, Northern Illinois. Tommy, that's a staple of those West Coast philosophies. You get a turnover, you try and go for the jugular right away. No doubt. Try to make a, make a statement. And certainly Northern does make a statement with their first offensive play from scrimmage. Charlie Fry, single back set. He's going to hand off, and it is not going to go anywhere. Martin Wilson in on the tackle. Jarrell Ringer in. So Brett Biggs obviously having a problem after that fumble. There you see their starting lineup. Biggs, Bash, Bash, they are brothers. Hickson and Ellington, the skill position players for the Zips. Crouch, Conley, Barici, Picciarillo, and Grizkowiak. To be a second down situation, nearly 10. Fry under center, going to throw. Drops back, looks, looks. He's going to run with the football, and he's knocked down at the 41-yard line. Take a look at the Northern Illinois defense. Tommy, it is a pack of guys that can get after you. Well, they call it the attack 4-3, and they, they get after your quarterback. They'll try to create turnovers. They're not as, as good a group collectively as they were last year, but they've had some new faces. Guys are stepping in and, and finding their way in this defense. It's going to be a third down, and we'll call it five yards. Charlie Fry under center. High backfield, and he's going to throw again. Fry looks, looks, throws, and it is broken up. Outstanding play by Rob Lee. Rob Lee came up and made a really nice play in the ball, Tom. Looks like they make it a, a, another opportunity for this third down. You'll see Rob Lee once again make a play. This time he's in a little better position. You see the ball wobbling. This young man, Dominic Hickson, his go-to receiver for Charlie Fry, started the last two years at free safety. Penalty on Akron will be declined, obviously, by Northern Illinois. Not enough men on the line. A procedure penalty, and they will punt. We talked about the inaccurate passes early from Charlie Fry. He dislocated the pinky on his throwing hand on the first snap in last week's game against Kent State. And the Akron coaches were a little concerned that this is something that may bother him throughout the course of today's game. Bill Sullivan, a high short kick, is going to come down to Dan Sheldon. He gets away from it. Did he touch it is the question. But the ball does roll out of bounds 
at the 37-yard line. For the Huskies, their second possession, they lead 7-0, they'll go away. Applebee's new car side to go is here. Well, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, little darling. With car side to go, you can make dinner just by making a call. Let's go, let's go, again once more. Plus, we'll deliver the food straight from our kitchen to your car. Oh, pretty baby, I love you so. So try Applebee's new car side to go. It's not fast food, it's Applebee's food fast. Eating good in the neighborhood. It's Fox NFL Sunday. See who goes 10 yards with TV as he asks the questions nobody else would dare ask. Then, two of the league's most legendary franchises meet in an NFC Classic. Kurt Warner and the Giants take on Brett Favre and the explosive Packers. Fox NFL Sunday, tomorrow, 11 Central. to McDonald's and enjoy two delicious sausage McMuffin with egg breakfast sandwiches or two juicy big and tasty sandwiches for just three dollars. Welcome back to Brigham Field at Husky Stadium on the campus of Northern Illinois University. David Kaplan and Tom Waddle with you. Jim Blaney on the sidelines. Huskies, second possession, first to ten at their own 37. And Josh Halby's going to throw again, and he's going up top long. He looks, and it is going to be out of bounds, incomplete. Marcus Perez could not get a foot down. He did make a nice catch on the ball, Tom. He did make a good catch, obviously, out of bounds. I got a feeling that maybe Josh Halby's calling the plays right now. He's been out for four weeks, and now he's airing it out. Again, Perez with a step. The ball just thrown a little bit too far to the outside. And you'll see Perez come up with the catch, but the ball just drifts a little bit too far out. Second and 10 situation. Huskies, who are a very good running team, have yet to run the football. Only had two plays. Holding going to throw again. Dumps it off for Sheldon. He goes... Nowhere. He is at the 39, maybe the 40-yard line. Let's take a look at the starters. For Northern Illinois, Garrett Wolf gets the start at tailback. Sam Hurd, Brad Seaslack, the big tight end. Sheldon and Jake Nordine really is in there to do a lot of blocking. And then a good offensive line anchored by McGawkey for Strady. Very good group. It's a very balanced offense. They're a ball control offense with an experienced group of veteran offensive linemen. They're going to run the football quite often today. They've come out throwing, but they will run it. Baldy is going to run and try and grab a first down, and he is going to come up short, and Northern will have to punt. Come up about three yards short, so the Huskies will have to send the punt team out. It looks like that's what they're going to do, and yes, they will. Returning from a, a stress fracture in his foot. I'm not sure Joe Novak wants to see Josh Haldy tucking it and running with it quite often today. But we talk about the lift that having your senior quarterback gives you back in the lineup. A guy who's 18 and 6 as a starter for the Huskies. Very efficient quarterback. Certainly gives this team a lift today. Anthony Gallagher is going to put it in the air. And he's going to drive it around the 20. No one back for Akron. Interesting on this, Tom. It's going to roll dead at the 8-yard line. They Akron went for the block. Was, I think Akron was a little confused with the, the punt formation that Northern set up. Anthony Gallagher booms one, and it's going to roll dead. They're going to call it at the seven-yard line. The hard luck continues for this Akron football team. This man's going to have a successful career at Akron. J.D. Brookhart, tremendous offensive mind, spent seven years at Pittsburgh with Walt Harris. Got a lot to get done at Akron, but I think over the course of time, he will do a very nice job. Brett Biggs not back in the ball game yet. Fry is going to hand the football off, and that 
is going to be what they call a TOL, Tom. Tackle for a loss, big time. Javen Lee with a huge play. Akron is going to try to establish the run today and take some of the pressure off of their quarterback, Charlie Fry. But as you see, just tremendous pressure from Javen Lee. Boy, so for Akron, this is not how you wanted to see this game start. With a big play off a fumble, and then start right in the shadow of your own goal, especially on the road. Fry again under center. And the Huskies may have jumped. Everyone in red wants to make a play today. They're fired up. As well they should be. Coming off a huge win over Bowling Green last week. This team feels very good about itself. Dead ball. Off sides by contact on the defense. Five yards, still second. So now from a second 14, you go to a second nine. That can't make Joe Novak happy, although his guys, obviously, their motors are ready to roll. Well, you've got a veteran quarterback, a smart quarterback in Charlie Fry, probably a little inflection in his voice. Gets the Husky defense to jump and get five yards back that they lost on that initial run on first down. Out of the shotgun will be Fry Ringer, the only man in the backfield with him. Again, Brett Biggs hurt on the first play from scrimmage for Akron. And Ringer's going to get the handoff, cut up the middle. Gang tackled right around the, call it the 18-yard line. That should be enough time to move the sticks. It's a team that only rushes the ball for about 70 yards per game, so obviously their first choice is to throw it, but they're going to have to run it. Just a little delayed draw. Jarrell Ringer breaks his first tackle, gets into the Husky secondary. It's their first first down of the day. Looks like they'll be running Akron. Probably will run a lot of three and four wide receiver sets today. As you said, Brett Biggs got injured on the first series, but Dan Bash, their fullback, is injured today as well. Brian nearly fumbled the football. Now he's going to look to throw and throws it into the carpet. Nearly fumbled the snap, Tom. Yeah, I, I think that, first of all, that that injured Pinky is probably bothering him some. He's still trying to learn this West Coast offense, and he's lost a lot of his security blanket in the form of his three best wide receivers, his tight end from last year. But as you see, the numbers are still pretty phenomenal. But when you lose Brett Biggs quickly, first running play for Akron, and you're a team that struggles to run the football anyway, that's not a good I'm not so sure that Northern's going to honor the Akron run to begin with, but certainly puts a lot more pressure on the quarterback. Ringer, the tail of the tandem. Fry under center, man in motion. Fry is going to throw the football again. Fry looks, and he's going to go down. He is dragged down. Travis Moore, I believe, sneaks in for the sack. Surprisingly, this is an offensive line for Akron with 100 career combined starts. But it's a group that's had trouble. You see Travis Moore just knifes in, finds his way to Charlie Fry, and again, negative plays for Akron, a team that has already struggled offensively through their first four games. This is something that they cannot afford to do, is fumble the football, take penalties, and take sacks. And that's exactly how this game has started for them. The third and 11 situation for Akron. Again, Fry out of the gun. Obvious passing situation here. He barks out the signal. The snap. He's got some time. He looks. He's going to go long. He throws down the field, and he overthrows his intended receiver. And he made a bad decision. On the other sideline, he had Dominic Nixon. Jabari Arthur, the man that he was trying to hit. Ray Smith and makes Rob Lee in coverage. Makes it awful difficult, even on an accomplished quarterback, to convert third and 12 when there is zero threat of a running game. Bill Sullivan back to punt. I think Bill Sullivan's probably going to need to ice that leg in four quarters of football here. Snap, Sullivan's kick is away. Dan Sheldon drifting toward the sideline, grabs it at his own 35. Tries to cut up the middle, and he's knocked down at the 43-yard line. We are going to take a timeout. 8.38 left, first quarter. Husky 7, zip, nothing on top pass for today. Oh, my gosh. Did you see the ref totally blow that goal? Like, yeah. He was, like, so embarrassed. Is that call closest to game? I will be like a major man. Totally.
What's enough to make anyone chatty as a schoolgirl? Right now, get 1,000 Anytime Minutes for just $20 a month, plus free mobile-to-mobile -mobile minutes or incoming calls. U.S. Cellular, we connect with you. And be sure to ask about nights and weekends, starting at 7 p.m. You'll find that many of the designer suits that we sell for $200 are made with the same quality and care as those that others sell for twice as much, which probably explains why we can sell so many of them, which in turn explains why we can sell them for $200. 100% wool, $200. Men's Warehouse. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. To contact the store nearest you, call 1-800-776-SUIT. Welcome back to Northern Illinois University. David Kaplan and former Bear standout Tom Waddle. And you saw some of the highlights. And Brad, uh, Brett Biggs is the starting tailback for Akron, a team, Tommy, that struggles to run the football. He fumbled, and now he has been on the sideline ever since that fumble with ice on his shoulder. Let's go to Jim Blaney. He's got an update. All right, David, thank you very much. And what they have, Biggs sitting down, he still has all his equipment on, except for his helmet. They have the ice pack on his neck, as you mentioned. But though the trainers are checking out, they're having Biggs grip their hands to see how hard he can grip their hands. So that leads you to believe that it's something in the shoulder or the arm, maybe a stinger. But uh, he doesn't look like he's coming back for the immediate time. But they're certainly going to work on him and see if they can get him back in. All right. Thank you, Jimmy. So there you see as they work on Brett Biggs. If he does come back into the ballgame, I suggest he run away from Lionel Hickenbottom this next time. That was a wicked, wicked hit. The second and ten situation, Haldy incomplete on the previous play to Dan Sheldon. Haldy going to give it to Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf right up the middle. Garrett Wolf breaks into the secondary. Garrett Wolf up the sideline, knocked out at the 26-yard line. Big time run. Well, it's taken them a while to commit to the run. A little surprised they came out airing it out. Obviously, it paid dividends with the first pass of the game going for a touchdown but you see this little guy he's five foot seven about 170 pounds finds a hole hits it quickly used the stiff arm as well so not just quick but also shows some strength there ran for 204 yards in the second half last week against bowling green all the under center Wolf, the single back set on a first to ten Northern Illinois. The give again to Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf up the middle to the 15 yard line. Well, if this Akron team was doubting itself prior to now, after turning the ball over and making some mistakes on offense defensively, they're getting chewed up right now. That big offensive line is manhandling the front seven of Akron right now. When you have a, a running back who's five foot seven and that quick, it's hard to find him. Very difficult for the linebackers and the safeties to find that little guy. But they went bad Acker, the center, just opened a big hole. Haldy gonna throw. Looks and has Sheldon inside the five-yard line. Well, they've done a good job, Tom trying to get Haldy some confidence knowing that he hasn't put them. They have, and, and there's a veteran move by a, a senior wide receiver. Dan Sheldon, you see the little half roll. Haldy hits Sheldon. You see Sheldon kind of gear it down right there, knowing that he's got defensive pressure on the outside. Not only a good athlete, but Dan Sheldon, a very smart football player. Haldy under center. They're inside the five-yard line. Hand off Garrett Wolf up the middle. Garrett Wolf is in the end zone. Give it six. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. You have to be impressed with this young man. Not just his speed and his elusiveness, but he's a pretty strong runner as well, despite his size. And he just finds a little room right behind his center. A little cutback move. Jake Frustrati and the guys clear out some space and Garrett Wolf finds the end zone for the fourth time in the last two games. Nendix extra point is good. So, 7.51 left first quarter. 14-0. Husky over Zips. Joe Novak, a happy man. Look at the scoring drive. Five plays, 57 yards. Took all of 47 seconds, Tom. Yeah, this is all Garrett Wolf, too. He runs 
rips off a 30-yard run, rips off a 12-yard run, and ultimately gets in the end zone on the four-yard run. This is what I thought we would see out of Northern right off the bat is they have the size advantage up front with that offensive line. They have two talented running backs. We have not seen A.J. Harris at all yet. He's still suffering from an ankle injury, but Garrett Wolf, who had a tremendous second half last week against Bowling Green, is certainly picked right up where he left off last week. And J.D. Brookhart looking on that script to find if there's a way to slow down this running attack of the Huskies. I'm not sure he's going to find it on that sheet of paper. J.D. Goodwin. Goodwin and Hickson now, the third different set on the opening uh, from the opening kickoff after Brett Biggs went out with that shoulder neck injury. Nendick to kick it off. The kick will be grabbed at the two. And Akron's going to have to field position, Tom. They're going to start across the 30-yard line. Tonight at 6.30, get caught up on the latest news, scores, and highlights on Sports Night. It's your one-stop shop for the entire Chicago sports scene. Sports Night, tonight at 6.30, only on Comcast Sports Night. Tell you, I'm honored to be part of the first live event. It's a great honor here at Looking forward Comcast. to doing uh, a lot of different things with Comcast. You and I will be doing some... Northern football, we're back here in a couple of weeks. Andy Lawson is down for Northern Illinois. He is a 6'2", senior backup wide receiver out there on kick coverage. Shaking up right around the 25-yard line. This is going to give this Akron football team a chance to kind of gather themselves and talk about what they need to do to get back in this ball game. Lawson... Obviously, it's a pain. Look like he may have wrenched a knee. You had some injuries when you played. Your share. I was usually so fast, no one could catch me. No one could touch me. I just dusted him off. No, I actually... They timed I, you with a sundown. I, I had a pretty serious hip injury that would slow me down. People always ask me why I retired. I said, well, I couldn't run at the end of my career. And running kind of a prerequisite for being a wide receiver in the National Football League. Charlie Fry out of the gun. Jarrell Ringer, the single back. Fry's going to give it to Ringer again. A little delayed draw that we saw earlier, and Ringer going to pick up seven, maybe eight yards. So they've had some success running that play time. Well, they're going to have to. Otherwise, Northern, who, again, as I said earlier, they're not creating as many big plays defensively this year as they did last year, just seven sacks and nine takeaways this year. But that won't stop them from coming after an opposing quarterback. And the best way to slow down an aggressive defense is to run the football and throw some screens. And I imagine that Charlie Fry and his coach will talk about doing just that. Again, Ray Smith involved in another tackle. He has really asserted himself here early. Here come the Huskies, a little bit of pressure. Fry steps up and throws. Zips it. Zips it. Jabari Arthur made the catch. Hansbro was in on some coverage. Now take a look at Charlie Fry. Tommy, he does have a finger problem from a dislocated pinky. Again, it floats a bit. It's wobbly, but he gets it. Yeah, he does a great job stepping up in the pocket as well. You see the numbers of Jabari Arthur. Good story with Arthur. He's also the backup quarterback, so if anything happens to Fry, you'll see him switch from wide receiver to under center. They're going to claim movement here. Yellow laundry all over the field. The Huskies say that Barici, the center, moved. Once again, it may be their best option offensively. Charlie Fry with a little inflection in his snap count. Second time the Huskies have been... By contact, by the defense, number 49, they call it by yards, Northern Illinois. Door. So it'll bring up a first and five. Well, it's a good substitute for a poor running game. To have a quarterback that knows how to get the opposing head bob and know how to change the inflection of his voice. Fry with Ringer, the single back set. Wide receiver screen, it's Jaffari Arthur, cut down. Adriel Hansbro, his first year as a starter for this, this Husky team in the secondary, really developed nicely. Just a little bubble screen. 
Hansbro does a nice job passing on the initial receiver to the guy behind him, his defender behind him. And Javon nice Lee also got a hit in there. A nice sure tackle. Going to bring up a second and four for Charlie Fry and the Akron Zip. Trailing 14-0 first quarter. Fry's going to hand it off to Ringer, and Ringer is going to crawl his way. We'll call it the 42-yard line. Bring up a third and short. Well, you'll see how the penalty affects this drive. Two plays for minimal yardage, and yet you're still left with third and short. The beast, Brian Atkinson. Last time we were out here, he was a terror all over, all over the field. Single back set again is Ringer. Fry under center on a third and short for Akron. get there outstanding job by the huskies javen lee came up and filled the hole tom yes this husky defense is just getting tremendous penetration again a delay javen lee maybe the most athletic of the 11 defensively for northern a huge stand at the initial offsides penalty they hold Akron to a fourth down. And again, Bill Sullivan, as you said, may have to ice that leg. Hey, we got one. We got one. Dan Sheldon is deep again for Northern Illinois. Snap, perfect kick is away. Sheldon is going to watch this one, and it's going to come down and go into the end zone. Nearly had that one down near the goal line. Nothing, it rolls into the end zone. Nothing going right for the Zips. Currently. Boy, that one you thought was just going to check up like a nice little pitching wedge. Let's go back down to the sideline. Our man, Jim Blaney. Jim? All right, David, the word on Andy Lawson. He was taken right into the locker room after he came off the field. Knee injury. He will not be back at any point the rest of the game. Back to you. Hate to see that. Actually, the new surface here that they've had in for a couple of years now, this new field turf, has actually limited the number of those injuries, but ultimately a pretty vicious sport. You're going to see guys go down. Garrett Wolf, Garrett Wolf into the teeth of the Akron defense, and he is going to pick up maybe two yards, maybe a couple yards, a pack of zips there to turn him back, bringing up a second, and we'll call it eight. I think you're going to see a steady diet of Garrett Wolf today. Again, we've talked about his his size you see it best days rushing by a sophomore garrett wolf 202 yards actually 204 in the second half as you see obviously held for minus two yards in the first half of last week's game against bg aldi rolling avoids the sack tosses it down the field and tosses it away did a nice job to stay away from the sack huh? well there's a veteran quarterback we talked about it earlier makes very good decisions the young man who's just had a stellar career both on the field and in the classroom an academic all-american guy that truly takes over in that huddle he was voted by some writers the coolest quarterback under pressure in the mid-american conference third down situation for northern paul is going to operate out of the gun he's going to dump it off on a screen to garrett wolf garrett wolf up the sideline Garrett Wolf across the 50 in the Akron territory. Boy, this little guy can motor. He sure certainly can. You give him a little space and he's gone. Once again, Dan Sheldon leading the way. Like to see those wide receivers picking up blocks. Just a well-designed play once again. These plays work so much better with a veteran quarterback. Now, Phil Horvath, who stepped in admirably for the first four games, Probably doesn't have the same success. You see the offensive lineman, he gets a block. He gets a block from his wide receiver, Sam Hurd. Paul going to throw again, and this one he throws too high. He's looking for Chatone Powers, number 83, junior wide receiver. Still a little rust to knock off for Josh Haldy. It won't be a perfect performance. 
I know Joe Novak very happy to see his veteran quarterback out there today. Second and 10 at the 44 of Akron. Huskies 14 up already. Aldi gives it to Garrett Wolf. He picks his way to about the 43 yard line. Young man's got some courage. He runs primarily or has run the ball today primarily between the tackles. Coaches have nicknamed Garrett Wolf. Remember last year they had Michael the Burner Turner? They have nicknamed Garrett Wolf the Back Burner. <laughs> well, between he and A.J. Harris, I think they have found a tailback by committee situation that has picked up where Michael Turner left off. Aldi operates out of the gun. He looks, he fires, he's got his man. That is going to be a first down for Northern Illinois. Chatone Powers, I believe, the man that made the catch. Watch Haldy, very cool, steps up. Chatone Powers does a nice job finding the hole and sitting down. Shevin Pace made the tackle. See another look. Haldy with nice protection. Reggie Corner, a little slip the bat in the secondary for the Zips. What a name for a quarterback. Reggie Corner. Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf up the middle, and he will be turned back by a pack of golden blue jerseys led by John Fuller, the linebacker, 6'2. Rather light at 2'11 for a linebacker in the Division I ranks. Yeah, a very active young man, though. Switches over from the safety position where he had 25 career starts in the secondary. Now they ask him to come in and take on linebackers and offensive linemen. And, and yellow laundry comes out. Find out what the problem is. By the offense. Five yards, still second down. You want to interpret that for us, Tom? Substitution foul. You can't just run anybody in from the side. You can't have more than 11 players in the huddle at any one time. Is that cleared up for you? Thank you. Want to make sure everybody at home? No, you were not a math major at, where was it, Hamlin that you went to school? Harvard of the Midwest. Okay. Everyone who feels insecure about the academic standard of their college says the Harvard of someone, right? Hey, Boston College is my second choice. <laughs> Aldi's looking, Aldi fires down the field and has his man. He has his man, Sam Hurd, the junior wide receiver, makes the catch. And, you'll and the Huskies have another first down. This is such a difficult pass to complete, a little play action, and he runs a corner into the short side of the field, and again, the Akron defensive back falls down. Sam Hurd actually does a nice job throttling it down, but again, a very difficult pass to throw into the boundary. All the under center, Garrett Wolf, the single back set. The handoff to Garrett Wolf, and he is going to be dragged down quickly. Chase Blackburn did a wonderful job. They call him their bandit. And he stepped up and made the play. Hey, folks, Inside Husky Sports, Thursdays at 5 p.m. on Comcast Sportsnet for everything Huskies. Check their website out, www.niuhuskies.com. Second down and nine, Haldy going to throw. Dump for Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf can walk in. Give him six more. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. This Husky offense is money in the red zone coming into today. 16 possessions. They scored seven touchdowns, six field goals. You'll see just a little swing screen, and you'll see Jake Frustrating, number 66, lead the way. And Garrett Wolf, Wolf walks in untouched. Again, you'll see Frustrating coming into your, your living room right here. He gets a block. Well, he just cleaned house. Extra point is up, extra point is good. So, 44.7 seconds left first quarter. Northern Illinois right now on autopilot, 21-0. Crowd's excited, they're having a good time. J.D. Brookhart's looking for a tourniquet over there on the Akron sideline. He knows as you try and Build a program, bring in a new offense. They lost a ton from last year's team. 
definitely it's a take some time. transition year, no question about it. Installing a new offense, a new defense. They've moved a, a good number of their defensive players around as we talk about John Fuller moved from safety to outside linebacker. Three or four of the defensive line starters last year have been moved around. Dominic the, Hickson was a safety. The entire wide secondary has four new starters, so there are going to be some growing pains. But he will get it turned around. Goodwin and Hickson deep for Akron. Nendick, he may need to ice his leg. Been kept busy here in the first quarter. Nendick's kick is going to come down at the goal line into the end zone, actually, and Akron will widely take a knee and go on the attack first and 10 at their own 20, trailing 21 0. There's a look at the scoring drive. Ten plays. Took nearly four minutes off the clock. And Wolf, a 13-yard TD catch. Well, they knew they had something special in Wolf, who I believe was ineligible last season. Academically, this year came in. Uh, they were very impressed with him in, in spring ball, and he's now getting the opportunity because of A.J. Harris's injury, and he's making the most of it. Charlie Fry going to roll on first to ten. Oh. Fires for his man. Okay, game maybe seven as Hickson made the catch. Uh, you have to see the hit that Brian Atkinson laid on Charlie Fry. I'm not sure we have it. I'm not sure that Charlie Fry's parents would want to see it, but we will show it to you. He gets it away. And I have to tell you, Brian Atkinson, lucky he wasn't flagged for leading with his helmet. Actually, Charlie Fry at six foot four and two twenty-eight is the same size as Brian Atkinson, so. Charlie Fry is a tough kid. We'll tell you about some of the injuries he's battled. Hand off the ringer on the little delay again. This is a kid in Charlie Fry. We said he dislocated his finger the first play of the season. His pinky. First play of last week against or, Kent State. Last week against Kent State. And kept popping it back in himself throughout the day. He is a tough, tough kid. We have reached the end of the first quarter of play. It's 21-0 Northern Illinois. There's the scoring up to the moment. Three TDs for the Huskies. We come back. See if Akron can chew into the lead. Mm, everything is so fresh. I wonder who her caterer is. It's me. <laughs> I'm the caterer. Please come on, Patricia. Who is it? You think I have a fancy chef back there with a tall white hat and a funny accent? Can I have his number? Jewel, helping make your life easier. on jeans at Blaine's Farm and Fleet, your denim headquarters with quality brands like Wrangler, Rustler, Riders, and Lee. For everyone in the family, you'll find the right jeans at the right price. What can you do to be safe around trains? Don't take shortcuts across the track. Don't ignore the bells and whistles of an approaching train. Always obey lights and gates. This is actual video footage. Unfortunately, this happens every day on the railroad. When it comes to train safety, make the right choice. Be safe, be smart, look, listen, and live. Welcome back to DeKalb. It has not been a good day for Charlie Fry for Akron. The news is about to get worse. First of all, he loses his only threat of a running game when Brett Biggs goes out. Then the northern corners came up and started pressing the receivers right at the line of scrimmage. They're not even getting off the line. And now with a 21-0 lead for Northern, you can look for those defensive linemen to totally disregard the run. Back to you, Dave and Tom. Thank you, Jim. He makes a great point. And Ringer on the delay, and this time it goes nowhere to beast. Brian Atkinson comes up and says, no chance. Ken West was the man actually in the backfield. He sniffed that out in a big, big way. This same type of delay play, and just Ken West comes in untouched. 
And once again, Billy Sullivan, tongue dragging, heads out to punt the football again. Ken West came off that edge, got into the backfield so quick, I thought it was the middle linebacker that came up the shoot and made the play. Sullivan's kick is away. Dan Sheldon's going to grab it right around the 26. Dan Sheldon trying to turn the corner. Dan Sheldon across the 40. Dan Sheldon into Akron territory. Dan Sheldon is going to take it all the way. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Dan Sheldon takes it to the hop. I don't know what more can go right for this Northern Illinois football team right now. They're doing it defensively, offensively, and now special teams. Dan Sheldon, the young man, doesn't fare catch very often. The team with a little limp leg right there, shakes an accurate defender. Dan Sheldon returned three punts for touchdowns two years ago in the 2002 season. Missed half of last year with an injury. It seems to be back in top form. 73 yards officially on the punt return, and the Huskies blowing out the zip stop. 28-0. There you see Mr. Sheldon finding Hayter. Husky 28. Zip something. We'll be right back. NIU fans, when you enter the Village Commons bookstore, you're entering Husky territory. BCB is the official site for NIU Athletics, featuring the new NIU logo on a wide range of hats, t-shirts, shorts, sweats, and NIU logo gifts and accessories. Whether you're a student, graduate, or a fan of NIU Athletics, the Village Commons bookstore is your Husky headquarters. Visit us in DeKalb or call us toll-free, 800-700-4868 or on the web at www.bcbs.com. Hey, Frankie. Bernie. I see you got a new lottery machine, huh? No, this is from 1974. No, I thought I'd show it off for the 30th anniversary. Man, let me check it out. Wow. One more time. Yeah. Woo! Wow. Guess some things never go out of style. Wow. Expect the unexpected. The Illinois Lottery. Have a ball. Well, give it six points for Sheldon. Give it 28 for Northern Illinois. Dan Sheldon, if you're just joining us, just took a punt return, 73 yards to the house. And the Huskies right now, Tom, they're playing very well. Yes, they are. On all three facets of the game, they've pretty much shut down Charlie Fry in that Akron offense. Offensively, they've ran it exceptionally well. They've run the football well with Garrett Wolf, Josh Aldi connects with Dan Sheldon on the opening play offensively for Northern for a touchdown and now Dan Sheldon takes one in via the punt return so they need now is a defensive touchdown for the trifecta and with plenty of time to go it very well we may, may happen. see it the way things have gone right now Well, we talked about it off the top. This is a Husky football team that came into today's game very confident. A big win over Bowling Green last week. They get their veteran quarterback back in the lineup, and they have found some depth at the tailback position. So the team on a roll right now. Mendix kick is going to come down around the 10-yard line. It's Dominic Hickson. Dominic Hickson tries to turn the corner. Dominic Hickson knocked down at the 25-yard line. That's where Charlie Fry and company will go back on the attack. Do you expect to see them try to run the football at all? I know they don't have much of a running game. Well, you're down 28 points in the first 17 minutes or 16 and a half minutes of play. I think that uh, you go with your strength, and that's throwing the football. And I'm assuming Charlie's going to have to ice down his arm at the end of the day as well. You almost feel some sympathy for Charlie Fry, who is having a bit of a rough year with all the loss to the graduation to his school play. He's going to hand it off to Ringer. Ringer breaks the tackle. Ringer out near the 35-yard line. 
Tom Tomorrow when the Bears game ends, switch to Comcast Sportsnet for U.S. Cellular Bears postgame live. Dan Jiggett, Chris Zorich, Marv Levy, and Dave Dorson break down the action, bring you live postgame interviews and press conferences. Bears postgame live tomorrow immediately after the Bears game on Comcast Sportsnet. The Bears have an uphill battle as well tomorrow against a very good Philadelphia Eagles team. It's the first 10 situation, actually they'll call it second and short for Charlie Fry and the Akron Zips. Fry fakes, he looks, he looks, can't find a man, now he's flushed out of the pocket. He's gonna fake, he's gonna run the football, pick up the first down, and Fry is gonna stumble down around the 46 or 47 yard line. Showed some mobility. He has, he's a young man who can run the football. You'll see him, good pocket awareness, just can't find anybody open, and this is where a group of inexperienced wide receivers hurts a veteran quarterback. You have to run to the quarterback and no one runs in the quarterback vision, and Charlie Fry makes something out of nothing there. But he does get a first down, moves the sticks, and Charlie Fry and company will start first and 10 now at the 45-yard line. Maybe changing the play to the line of scrimmage. Charlie Fry is going to go up top. He's looking down the field, and it is broken up. Broken up by Rob Lee, the corner, number 27, 6'1", senior, made the play. Jabari Arthur was the intended receiver. Well, Jimmy Gordon had a chance to catch this. Once again, not a great throw by Charlie Fry. But again, Jamie, Jamie Goodwin has an opportunity. This one hangs in the air for quite some time like a punt. Rob Lee does get a hand on it, but very difficult to throw into double coverage. Marks out signals and going to throw the football again. Looks over the middle and finds his tight end. Drills it in. The Chris Kasparic makes the catch. And that will be another Akron first down. Back up tight end. Just a freshman does a nice job. Make sure he hauls it in. Nice release. Finds a hole in the middle of the defense. And that's that's what Charlie Fry needs to do, throw some high percentage passes, get some confidence, allow his receivers and his young group of offensive players around him to gain some confidence, give his defense a break. Charlie Fry again, going to hand it off to Ringer, Ringer up the middle, he's going to fall across the 30-yard line. We'll see where they mark this one, but... Good seven, maybe eight yards for Akron on first down. Well, it's just every now and then a defense holding the 28-point lead will fall asleep, maybe lose their enthusiasm, and right now Akron's put their most effective drive into play. Call it second and two. Gain of eight for Jarrell Ringer. He's going to have to make some plays out here today. Ringer, and Ringer is rung up. Brian Atkinson, the beast, filled the hole and nailed Ringer. I circled to one of the Akron receivers. You'll see this play, Ringer, really with nowhere to go. And once again, the front seven of Northern. Great job by Brian Atkinson to just scrape across the hole and make a, a great play from his middle linebacker position. But Northern really showing no respect to the Akron wide receivers. They've got their safety in the middle of the field, leaving their corners alone out there. Eventually, Charlie Fry is going to have to make a play on top of this Northern secondary to loosen things up. And here comes the pressure. They pick it up. They throw. And it looks like it should be enough for a first down for Akron. We'll see where they spot this, but it should be an Akron first down, uh, if I'm correct, right around the 29-yard line, and it will be enough to move the chain. He gets a great bit of help right there from his running back, Gerald Ringer. Picks up the blitz from Jason Hawkins, gives him some time to throw the football. I'll tell you what, Ringer's block was outstanding. Otherwise, that's a sack. That was 
more to play in the tailback position than just running the football. You also have to pitch in and help protect your quarterback. Charlie Fry, play action pass. Looking, can't find a man, and he's going down. Dragged down by Ken West, number 34, sophomore DN stepped up and made a play. I mentioned it earlier, you're seeing the inexperience of his wide receivers. It's just, once again, a good play action fake, and there's just nobody out here. His wide receivers need to be running towards him when the play breaks down. And his receiver flanked out on the left, never came across the field, and his receiver split wide on the right, never came through the middle of the field as, as well. Second and 13 at the Huskies' 28-yard line. Fry under center. Huskies bring pressure. Pass is completed and a broken tackle. Going to give a first down to Akron. Real nice job, Tommy. Jamari Arthur made the catch and broke the tackle. Well, he's going to have to get some help from his guys around him. And again, here comes a Husky rush. The big quarterback, Charlie Fry, delivers it. That's just a great athletic move by Jabari Arthur. And again, finally, this Akron offense starting to show some life. I'll tell you what, the Charlie Fry took a beating right there. He's taking a beating. Three red shirts and led by Atkinson threw him to the ground. First 20 minutes of this game is... They're going to measure to see if this is a first down. It was very, very close. Now you've got a six foot four, 230 pound quarterback. This is certainly what Akron needed. Now J.D. Brookhart's got a decision. Does he, oh, well, he gets the first down. Akron needed a long drive. Eat some time up, keep the Northern offense off the field. Get their defense, which just been destroyed through the air and on the ground, give them a chance to catch their breath. Not as calm as I've seen Joe Novak on the sideline in quite some time. He's not an overly emotional guy, but I think his gun right there is getting a bigger workout than his defense right now. He didn't become 28 in the second quarter. Kind of a comforting lead. Brett Biggs is back in the ball game. Good to see the starting tailback back, and he gets the handoff. Biggs up the middle. Biggs hurdles a tackler and is knocked down short of the goal line. The so they 34, get their starting Brett tailback Biggs. back in the football game, and he makes Brett up the down 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 final hit and bottom. Grabbin Ferrer, you'll see a great cut here. Here comes Hickenbottom. Freddie Keebler takes Hickenbottom down to find Turfell. <laughs> Brett Biggs, if this Akron offense is going to establish anything out there today, this young man's going to have to be a part of it. It's the first and goal at the two-yard line. Big single back set. And uh, Biggs, Biggs into the end zone. Give him six. Touchdown for Akron. I have a feeling Joe Novak's going to call his team over here in a little bit. Explain to them that, yes, this 28-7 or soon-to-be 28-7 lead is nice, but you're going to have to strap it back on and play. This is just physical football. He gets some movement up front by his veteran offensive line, and you see Brett Biggs returns to the game. Who lost a shoe in there? Somebody lost a shoe. Okay, shoes are meaningless in the game of football. Extra point is up, and the extra point is no good. The extra point is missed. Akron gets on the board. Brett is big. Finds pay dirt. May have left a shoe in the business, but he gets into the end zone. NIU football is back for more in 2004. Take the short trip to DeKalb to catch head coach Joe Novak's Huskies as they make their bid for a Mid-American Conference Championship. Great seats still available for remaining Husky home football games, including a nationally televised date against Mid-American Conference West Division rival Toledo. NIU football tickets start at just $17. To order your Northern Illinois University football tickets, contact your nearest Ticketmaster outlet or go online at NIUHuskies.com. Don't 
Don't miss the excitement of the Canadian Football League on Comcast Sportsnet. Comcast Sportsnet is your new home for Bulls basketball. Kirk Heinrich and the Young Bulls are looking to charge through the Eastern Conference. And we're running with the Bulls for 45 games. From before tip-off to after the final buzzer. And all that's in between, turn to Comcast Sportsnet. Free games, check in with Sports Night for all the last-minute news. Then after the game, stick around for Bulls post-game live for all the highlights and analysis. Chicago Bulls basketball, all season long. Get your game on Comcast Sportsnet. Welcome back to Brigham Field at Husky Stadium. David Kaplan, Tom Waddle, Jim Blaney with you. And Akron is on the board. They do miss the PAT, but they have at least found the end zone, Tom. Gives the entire team a bit of a lift and also allows that defense, as we were talking about, the Akron defense, to get a bit of a rest. Jason Swiger is kicking off here. Interesting story on Swiger. He dropped out of high school. He then got his GED, worked hard, got into school, has really, we said, matured, was cut as a walk-on, got a call last summer, just the day before summer camp began. We've got a spot open, are you interested? And he has won the job as the place kicker. Garrett Wolf dropped the kickoff, picks it up, stumbles out to about the 21-yard line. He said Swagger is a kid who really works hard. Very That's interesting story. story. It is. We may need a host of stories if this game continues to go the way it has for the first 20 minutes. Well, Bowling Green, who came in here last week and was beaten by Northern Illinois, got a wake-up call. Temple today. Like they woke up. They're only up 60. A little surprised to see Garrett Wolf back there returning kicks, especially with A.J. Harris on the sideline with an ankle injury. Haldy rolls, throws to C. Slack, his big tight end, and that's going nowhere. John Fuller once again. Leading tackler for this team this season. Talked about it earlier. Played the safety position last year when the new coaching staff came in. They asked him to move to the outside linebacker position, which is more of a rover spot. Even though he's only just over 200 right. pounds. He's not going to win that physical battle with Brad Tzizlak, so he did the wise thing and went low on the tackle. Tommy, do you remember Jack Lambert from the Steelers? He played at, what, 220 out of this conference out of Kansas State. Different era. Paldy hands off to Wolf. He picks up four yards via second and six upcoming games at... NIU, October 16th versus Central Michigan. We will be here, Tom, and November 9th versus Toledo. If you'd like tickets, call 312-559-1212 or NIUHuskies.com. I would think that the, the Northern Athletic Department would like us to be at every game because every game we have done, the Huskies have won. That's correct. Josh Haldy's going to throw. Sips it into Dan Sheldon. That will move the chains. That's a first down, Northern Illinois. Good catch by Sheldon. Well, he plays the role that P.J. Fleck played so well years ago, last year in the past three years, rather. Finds a hole, sits down, and Haldy delivers the strike. That's a good throw. Speaking of P.J. Fleck, last I checked, he was on the practice squad with the San Francisco 49ers. I believe he still is. One of the really good kids that you and I have dealt with in our years covering super young college football. Baldy handoff Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf will fall across the 45 out near the 47 yard line. Jay Rohr in on the tackle. Take a look at uh, October 14, 2000, NIU in a high scoring game over Akron, 52 35. And right now, 28 to 6. Could we see one of those 50 plus point games today? I'm not sure the Akron offense currently is capable of 35, but it's like Northern is capable of 50. Garrett Wolf again, and this play will go nowhere. Garrett Wolf cut down, may have lost a yard on the play. Yeah, this Akron team's playing with a little bit more heart right now, a little more confidence after the scoring drive. Defensively, as we said, they got a bit of a rest. They've come out here and at least been more competitive on this drive. Breon Stokes was the man that cut down Garrett Wolf. They'll call it a no gain on the play. Third and five 
at the 42 yard line. Aldi barking out signals. He's going to throw, and he throws behind Sam Hurd. Not a good throw, but Sam Hurd's got to do a little better job of throttling down. Not an easy thing to do, but third and five, the most important thing as a wide receiver is you have to make the catch. Now, when you say throttling down, not being so aggressive on your break, that's right. When you come out of the break, you've got to find the quarterback quickly and see where the ball, if it is coming to you, where it's at. And a lot of times, the quarterback's not going to be 100% accurate. Dominic Hickson is the man deep for Akron. He will receive Anthony Gallagher's punt. Snap, and the kick is away. An end-over-end kick. Hickson's got it at his 23. Hickson is going to break into the clear. Hickson knocked down at the 43-yard line. Real solid return. It is 28-6 Huskies, 5-19 left second quarter. Stick around, college football rolls on. A Comcast Sports Net. Hi, I'm Craig Culver of Culver's Restaurants. And here at Culver's, we're heating things up with our delicious new line of grilled milk. Their mouth-watering sandwiches made fresh to order, then grilled up to their hot and tasty. From classic tastes like our Wisconsin Swiss milk and sourdough milk to new favorites like our new Reuben milk. They're a delicious treat that'll melt in your mouth. So come in and try our new Culver's grilled milk. They're always hot, they're always fresh, and only from Culver's. Cheerleaders, it's a little chilly out there. I was going today. to say, got very their wise decision. Warm up sign. They obviously listened to the weather report this morning. That's see how that young lady's dressed right there. She's got the police top on, the ski hat. You know it's football season. Thunderstick. I love thunderstick. Charlie Fry can't find a man, and he is going to ball forward to, we'll call it the 45-yard line, so just gets back to the line of scrimmage, may have picked up a yard. And yeah, once again, finds nobody open, just makes a good decision not to try and force the ball, and a host of red jerseys bring him down, but again, you see some wide receivers from Accra just walking around, you've got to help your quarterback out. Quince Holman nearly had the sack with the tackle for loss there. Trying to operate out of the gun. And it's going to be a false start penalty, I believe. I believe Chris Kowiak. Right tackle moves. Tell us straight for us, Tom. I'm getting good at this, aren't I? You are. You see, now watch. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, you did it. You know the snap, the ball's just two feet away from you. Did you ever have a false start penalty? I had several of them. I'm sure yeah, Mike yeah. Ditka let you know about it. And it's, there's no excuse for a wide receiver because as a wide receiver, you're staring in at the football, and even if you can't hear the snap count, you don't go into the ball snap. At least I can understand how a tackle may not because he's not, may not, not here. He's not staring at the ball. There's no excuse for a wide out. And I did it. Continue. Looking, looking, Fry is going to be flushed out again. Still looking. He's going to keep the football, and he is knocked out. I hate to be repetitive, but once again, his wide receiver, Dominic Hickson, was standing basically doing nothing. You'll see Charlie Fry will roll to his left. His wide receiver, number 23, Dominic Hickson, will come into your screen. Nothing there to the right. Charlie Fry rolls. Hickson's over here. Now he finally go that way, Dominic. That was kind of awful drawing there, but honestly, when you're a wide receiver and your Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback points in a direction for you to go, you better go. Get there. Now, granted, we'll cut in some slack because he spent the last two years at the free safety position defensively, but you have to follow the instruction of your talented quarterback. Third down and long. Fry out of the gun. Looking, looking, looking. He fires. He's got his man. 
and that is going to be Dominic a first Hickson. down. Dominic Hickson just looked up and said, okay, Waddle, I'll make a play. Well, he did what I asked him to do. And it said, when your quarterback is scrambling around back there, find an open spot. Charlie Fry, again, patient, pointing direction, go. Somebody get open. Dominic Hickson? I don't know if Dominic watched football 25 years ago when you were playing, but again, I'm, I'm saying this half in jest because Dominic, again, is just learning the wide receiver position. Started at the free safety position. That was one of their leading tacklers a year, year. ago. Yeah. Driving a handoff. Brett Biggs. Inside the 40, we'll call it the 37-yard line. Well, this is a great example of a team with a big lead. We talked about it a little bit earlier, maybe getting a bit complacent, allowing their opponent a little bit of life and getting back into this game. Now you see Joe Novak starting to pace a little bit, but he can't be happy with the way his defense is relaxed. Yeah. his man that should be enough for another first down Morris Ellington 5'11 senior made the catch Adriel Hansbro made the tackle but they moved the chains again and you're right touchdown here and all of a sudden it's a two score football I like game. what Akron's doing right now I mean the last few plays they've really they've, they've opened up the offense you'll see them now in a just the standard set, but they've gone to more three and four wide receivers to spread out this northern defense. Fry looks, Fry throws, finds his man. Dominic Hickson has it, and so does our Jim Blaney. Jimmy? Dave, just to kind of piggyback on what you and Tom are talking about, you guys were talking about the effect of what Akron is doing on northern and their mood on defense. On the Akron sideline, when it was 28-0, it looked like a bunch of guys just wanted to get on the bus and get out of here. They came off the field after it was 28-7, and they were jumping up and down. They felt like they were right back in it, so that touchdown did a lot of good for Akron. It's amazing what a score will do for Absolutely. your confidence. And now you have a sustained drive, and you can go in the locker room in a two-score football game. Well, they still have a little bit of work to do to get this into the end zone. But as I say, you see Joe Novak a little bit perplexed. Langry probably with his, his crew. The first quarter was pretty much flawless. The second half, his defense has kind of let their guard down a little bit. When you have a, a talented veteran quarterback who's accomplished pretty much everything in his three-plus seasons in college football, sooner or later, he's going to get the best of you. But as I was saying earlier, I think that Akron has done a a nice job spreading this northern defense out a little bit although you don't have the same group of talented wide receivers that they had last season spread them out take your shots it's not a horribly deep northern illinois defense in the secondary now they always say that time of possession can really indicate who's going to win a football game Akron doubling northern but don't forget northern had some very short possessions for scores and a punt return for a touchdown fry looks looks he's got time zips it over to his man biggs biggs is going to get a first down and are they going to call that a touchdown yes they are and once again red shirt standing around being reactive instead of proactive I'm not sure because it's on the other sideline whether or not he did step out, but the official said he did not, and that's all that counts. Northern Again, Illinois was saying, Tom, that he stepped out of bounds, but we will find out right now. It doesn't look like he did, and you'll see Javen Lee standing around looking for a call. Still very hard to say, but you don't stop until the whistle's blown, whether or not you believe he stepped out. I believe Akron's going to go for two here and try and get it to a 14-point game. A minute 20 to go, and the crowd has grown very quiet. Other than the chant that we can't repeat right now. Correct. Again, I mean, that's just a defense resting there. Whether or not he stepped out of bounds, you still have to finish the play. That means bringing the, the receiver to the ground. Charlie Fries, they go for the two-point conversion, and Charlie Fry is lit up. Jay 
Stephen Lee sniffed it out, and the two-point conversion try failed. Well, just a little naked bootleg. Charlie Fry, who has the ability to run with the football, Javen Lee is buying none of that. Looks like it was a designed run. But Javen Lee, with tremendous speed on the outside from his linebacker position, stays at home. Now, if you're Joe Novak, what do you say to your offense right now? Do you say anything, or do you wait until you get into the locker room? Well, I think he's going to speak to the entire team in the locker room and tell them that you played 15 minutes of football in a 30-minute half. You played outstanding for the first 15 minutes of this game, and then you decided at 28 to nothing that Akron was just going to, as Jim Blaney say, get on the bus and go home. And that's not going to happen. As I said earlier, J.D. Brookhart comes from the Pitt program where Walt Harris is as good as it gets in college football. And he also worked for Mike Shanahan. He worked for Mike Shanahan in, in Denver. I mean, this is a group that's well coached. They are finding their stride, but they certainly are not going to quit. be interesting to see what Northern decides to do here with this offensive possession with 80 seconds left to go in the half. Marcus Perez, Lionel Hickenbottom, the deep man. Kick is going to come down right around the goal line, maybe a yard deep, and they're going to bring it out. Northern Illinois, Lionel Hickenbottom up the sideline. Lionel Hickenbottom to the 40-yard line. Good field position well, for the Huskies. Now there is no dis no question in what the Huskies are going to do. They're going to go on the attack here and try to put a score on the... the center of this Akron defense. Aldi again out of the gun. Garrett Wolf with him in the backfield. On a second and ten. Aldi looking, looking, looking. He is going to dump it off. He's going to find his man. He has got his man. That is going to be Chatone Powers making the catch and knocked out of bounds. Aldi initially was looking for Dan Sheldon. You may see him cross the middle of your screen right there. But instead of throwing across his body, he does the smart thing and throws to Chaton Power, who was coming into his vision. Another example of a, a smart decision by a veteran quarterback. Aldi under center. Garrett Wolf, the single back set. Wide receiver screen for Dan Sheldon. He catches it, Dan Sheldon breaks the tackle, and that will be enough for a Northern Illinois first down. That was a tough catch. That was an excellent catch by Dan Sheldon. If he doesn't bring it in, it may be ruled a, a backward lateral. A little surprised when you have the advantage at the line of scrimmage in third and one. A little surprised Northern decided to throw the bubble screen. What a great catch by Dan Sheldon. Ball's thrown away from him. And to get the first down, this young man doesn't get enough credit for being a, a sensational athlete. By the way, a score in the Mid-American Conference today. Bowling Green annihilates Temple. The final 70 to 16. 70 to 16. I got to tell you, Tom, the Mid-American Conference is just an outstanding league. Yes, they have made strides over the last decade. Terry Hopner's got a tremendous program in Athens, or excuse me, in, at University of Miami of Ohio. Bowling Green was an excellent football team last year. Toledo has struggled this season, but they've had success in the past few years. Rick Christ has done just a wonderful job as the commissioner of this league. I don't want to live in the past, but this Northern team, which goes 10 and two last season, and at one point was ranked 11th in the BCS standings. The fact that they did not go to a bowl game to me was probably the biggest injustice in the entire college football season last year. Aldi gonna look. Aldi throws down the field by Dan Sheldon. Give him six. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Well, you've seen it for the entire half of football here in the first half. 
The weakness of this Akron defense through the air is in the middle of the field. And once again, Dan Sheldon exploits that weakness. Halsey with a strike. What a great throw. Right over the top of the linebacker. And once again, it tells you when you can serve your timeouts and you get the two-minute drill, you still have the ability to attack the center of the field. Extra point is perfect. It is 35-12. So some of the Akron momentum blunted by the Northern Illinois offense. I'd say that Northern offense heeded the advice of their coach on the sideline. 38.8 seconds left. Dan Sheldon with three touchdowns, two through the air and one on a punt return in the first 30 minutes of football here today. Second uh, touchdown reception, but third on the day for Dan Sheldon. Had the punt return for a score of over 70 yards. There's a beautiful, beautiful dog. Victor E. Husky is what they like to call the mascot out here. I didn't see anyone trailing it with one of those plastic bags. That's your job. Okay. Tom will let you do the color if you'll go down there and clean up after Victor. I, I just mentioned it not to horrify the audience out there but you know probably there is some sort of ordinance here in DeKalb <laughs> they want to make sure that the folks at Northern Illinois are not violent. They have one of those husky pooper scoopers. Okay. I'm sure my family is just dying wondering why I decided to go down there. Oh the kickoff is going to come down short of the 10 yard line and Hickson Dominic Hickson brings it out. Looks like Joseph Hilby and with it on the tackle a 23 point deficit wouldn't be shocked to see akron come out and try to air it out themselves what do they really have to lose 34.9 seconds left for charlie fry you have a big time quarterback to take your shot i think that's certainly an option the northern two timeouts left do you try and use them again Watch this battle down here. They are going to throw. Charlie Fry looking, and Charlie Fry going down. I think now Akron will decide to go and probably go into the half without any more damage done. Once again, it's a jailbreak. Maybe it's not so much a jailbreak as it was. Uh, once again, the Akron receivers not getting open. Just a fine play by Ken West. Uh, Ken West has been in Charlie Fry's grill all afternoon long. One more play. Charlie Fry going to step up. Charlie Fry going to heave it as far as he can off one foot. Got his man. Time has run out. Hickson makes the catch, but the half has come to an end. 35-12, Northern Illinois. And to get back into this game, Dominic Hickson, Morris Ellington, Jabari, Arthur, these guys are going to have to win some battles on the outside against this Northern secondary if Akron is going to get back into this game. And we will talk with Joe Novak in just a moment. He'll join our Jim Blaney. He's got to feel a bit better that his club has taken the lead. In fact, we may even have J.D. Brookhart here going into the locker room, the head coach at Akron. And let's go down to Jim Blaney with the head coach from Akron. All right, David, thank you very much. Brett Biggs being in and out of the lineup seems to make a big difference. How much of your offensive play calling do you lose when Brett Biggs is unable to be in the lineup? We're going to still execute the same stuff. Uh, you know, he's, he's done extremely well. He's got some good quickness and does some good things, but... Uh, Jarrell's very capable as well. Is Biggs good to go the rest of the game? Yeah, he's cleared right now. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. So Akron looking to continue a comeback. They started, it was 28-0. Picked up a couple of touchdowns, but Northern answers with a late touchdown. And at halftime here in DeKalb, Northern leading Akron 35-12. We're back with four from DeKalb after this timeout on Comcast Sportsnet. <laughs>
Fitzgerald made some plays there for us. That drive at the end of the half was really critical. That was key. What did you say to your guys after Akron had gotten the second touchdown to close it down to 28-12? Well, we knew all along they're going to score some points. We got to learn to have a put-away attitude to us. We got to keep working on that. Joe, good luck in the second half. Dave and Tom, back to you. Well, all right, thank you, Jim. I really like Joe Novak. I mean, this is a guy who's always got his emotions in check. And he just, he's a football coach. Well, and you can't say enough about what he has done with this Northern program. Looking for his fifth consecutive winning season here in DeKalb. And I could tell by looking at him on the sideline after Akron had scored twice as Jim was talking to him, he wasn't happy. You have to put a team away when you have a significant lead. And that, that drive that, that Northern was able to get into the end zone at the end of the first half certainly um, probably did a lot to stem the emotion and uh, the flow that Akron had. It certainly gave uh, Northern a, a kick in the pants. And you see the numbers out there. And Northern's been able to do pretty much everything they've wanted. 65 yards on the ground. Garrett Wolf with 61 of those yards on 10 carries. They threw the ball very well. Northern 189 yards. Josh Haldy with three touchdown passes on the day. The number you see rushing yards from Akron right there, that's half their problem. They just have not been able to take any pressure off of Charlie Fry in the passing game. Akron winning the time of possession significantly, but with Northern's ability to score quickly, obviously the scoreboard says 35 to 12, and they have a significant edge there. Then there's a look at Josh Haldy, senior quarterback, 13 of 20, 189, and three TDs. Let's take a look how he put the points on the board. Here's Haldy. This is right after a fumble from Akron early in the football game, and Dan Sheldon just gets a foot down. Yeah, he did an excellent job getting the ball to Sheldon. Nice little touch pass on a screen to Garrett Wolf. He gets it into the end zone. His second of the three touchdowns. And then the last minute drive, he finds Dan Sheldon in the middle of the field. And again, that's their fifth touchdown of the first half. All the rust completely knocked off of Josh Haldy, who missed the first four games of the season with a stress, stress fracture in his right foot. Take a look at the Akron sideline, and they try and see if they can get a stop. Northern will have possession here to start the second half. A stop and a score, and you're right back in this football game. But a Northern touchdown really makes you play from behind you in know, a big way. No doubt Coach Brookhart needs his defense to stiffen up and get the ball back to Charlie Fry and his offense. But nice crowd on hand here today, 26,266 have filled Husky Stadium. Hickenbottom is deep along with Marcus Perez for the Huskies. Hope the folks in the stands have brought their winter gear because as the Getting shadows chilly cross the field, it's going to become a little bit colder as the afternoon rolls on, I believe. Swiger will kick it away. And his kick is going to go deep and through the back of the end zone. So the Huskies first and 10 from their own 20. We are underway here in the second half. Huskies will take over first and 10 from their 20 yard line. Expect to see Northern, as they did early in the football game, go to the air or just try and grind it out now? I would think that with a significant lead at 23 points, you want to run the football, chew up as much clock as possible. And Dan Sheldon on a little deception. Dan Sheldon breaks into the secondary, and he is at the 50-yard line. A little trickery from the Huskies on the opening play. I'll tell you what I love most about this young man is he does not run out of bounds. Just a little quick reverse. He finds a a spot to, to cut it up and instead of running out of bounds he decides to cut it right back into traffic to pick up a few extra yards sacrifices a hit or two but there's a young man that is not going to run out of bounds at any time and a first and ten garrett wolf the single back set garrett wolf gets the handoff garrett wolf turns the corner Talked about it with the halftime stats. Akron with a serious lead in time of possession. 
but Northern just keeps striking quick. This little guy can flat out motor. Yes, he can. And he's in for pay dirt. And I can tell you one thing. Coach Novak, when he sees that film tomorrow, will inform his young running back to switch that football from his left arm to his right arm. PAT hits the upright, bounds through. That's the kind of day it's been for the Huskies. And they are on the board again. 28 seconds into this half. They've got a 42-12 lead. to 12 Northern Illinois. This scoring drive took all of 28 seconds. At the start of the football game, the first scoring drive took all of 32 seconds. Well, lots of smiles on the Northern sidelines right now. You talk about time of possession. It's an insignificant stat today. It is. Garrett Wolf, a 49-yard touchdown jaunt. Scoring drives of 4 seconds, 47 seconds, 3 minutes and 57 seconds. Basically the time it took for Dan Sheldon to take a punt back 73 yards, which was probably a little under 8 seconds. 35 seconds, and as you say, 18 seconds there. That's a quick strike offense. That is a quick strike offense. Kick going to come down around the 15-yard line. And Akron is going to have some field position and maybe a whole lot more. Jamie Goodwin rumbled to the 40-yard line. And for a hot moment there, Tom, it looked like he might take it to the house. Well, as I said earlier, both teams have returned kicks exceptionally well. This is all effort. Good vision. Got himself a block here. And the Zips with good field position. At this particular time, down 42 to 12, with J.D. Brookhart once out of his Akron team, is some young guys making strides, getting some experience, and certainly looking to the future. Charlie Fry going to throw. That pass is dropped and nearly picked off. Montgomery dropped it, nearly intercepted. Rob Lee had a shot at it. Watch this. And he puts it on the money. That ball's up in the air, and Rob Lee well, should have had that one. Went right through his I hand. don't think Rob Lee was expecting Jason Montgomery to drop that football. This is one of those years where Charlie Fry, a tremendously talented quarterback, probably will not have eye-popping stats, but the NFL scouts will look at the big picture and realize he lost a lot of his talent from last year. Still very capable. Fry rolls left. Fry tries to see if he can get something going, and he's dragged out with no gain. Kind of an odd call, rolling your quarterback into the short side of the field. No gain. It's going to bring up a third and ten. Aaron Conley, the left guard, comes out. He lost his shoe in the process. Some shoe problems out there today. Yeah. Well, you only should spat the shoe. By spat, I mean take the shoes on outside the shoe. So why do you call it spat? I don't know. Repeating what I was told when I was born. Your term, or is that a technical term? Fry looking, looking. Fry's in trouble. There's a flag on the play. Fry dragged down, and we may have a hold in the, in the backfield. Looks like Atkinson may have been grabbed. Mike Picciarillo had two, two flags thrown at him, the right, ta or right guard for Akron. Charlie Fry showing some mobility, but he's getting away because someone with the white jersey is hanging on to a man in the red jersey. Can't do that. Can't do that. So the Huskies starting to assert their muscle. That is the third sack of the day for Kenny West. Lost the four yards on that play to bring up a fourth and 14. Billy Sullivan is wise here. I would expect him to kick this away from Dan Sheldon. That Sullivan's kick is away. 
Dan Sheldon comes up to grab it, gets out of the way, and there's going to be a flag on the play. Call that the halo rule. You've got to give the receiver two yards. Well, I don't blame Akron right now. Take the 10 or 15 yard penalty and be happy it wasn't another touchdown return. Dan Sheldon looking to find find the football and you see the red shirt get away from it. Garrett Wolf has had a really good day today. He's found the end zone via the run, the long run, the short run. He's caught a swing pass for a touchdown. He's just done a whale of a job. And he is so versatile despite the size. <laughs> Despite the five foot seven, 170 pound frame, I know you'll see him with the speed right there. And again, I told you, Joe Novak's gonna see that film and say, "Hey, Garrett, throw the ball on the outside arm." But he, so if they knock it away, it rolls exactly, out of bounds. Exactly. He's capable of pounding in between the tackles despite the size, and also has the speed to get outside and run away from people. And as you saw earlier as well, also quality receiver out of the backfield. Paul going to throw the little bubble screen you like to call it to Dan Sheldon and he gets drilled by Yao. Drilled. Cam Yao, 6'1 senior linebacker. Yep. Drilled it. And you have to have a nice balance of bravery and intelligence. And Dan always turns that ball back inside to try to gain more yardage. But in this particular situation, kind of a dead play. Just get down take your and lumps and get back, and get back exactly. in the huddle. There are, there are times when you should seek the sideline. Baldy going to hand this one off. And that is going to be a gain of about, call it six, Adrian Davis, 5'5", five, five, junior tailback, number 39, in in release of Garrett Wolf. Again, 42-12 lead. Very impressed with the Wolf's ability to carry the load. He's not a big back. Last week, as we said, carried it 30 times in the second half alone against Bowling Green. Aldi going to throw. Looks, fires it behind his man, Sam Hurd. So the Huskies will punt it away with a 30-point lead. Josh told these few mistakes today. First of all, the Nightbird situation. Get the football back. So Adrian Davis, the man who carried the ball there, his first carry today, he's the, uh, the strongest guy on this team. He is 5'5", five five. he benches over 400 pounds. That the short arm he doesn't have to push the weight very well. He can give all the short guys that Oh, there's the coverage on the punt by Northern Illinois. Alba Hansbro with a great tackle. Akron's going to start deep in their own end when we come back. For hitting the center before he had a chance to defend himself. And it's a 15 yard penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. Shame on that Akron Zim player, first of all, for hitting a defenseless man, and secondly, for doing something that was completely illegal. So Northern Illinois gets the ball. They pick up eight yards on first down on a running play, and they will move the chains here on another running play. Adrian Davis gets the job done. John Fuller again in on a tackle. And then you could have driven a truck through this hole. A great kick out block. Adrian Davis gets the first down. Takes a little bit of punishment. This is going to be a good opportunity for Adrian Davis to get some carries today. The Huskies up 30. Aldi under center. Aldi's going to throw. Aldi looks. Aldi gets away. He's going to run with the football. Aldi inside the 10. Dives to the 8, maybe the 7. Good decision by Josh Haldi. Not forcing the football into a tight spot. But again, when he's returning from a stress, frac stress fracture, he's <laughs> say, say, in his foot. 
believe there's some nervous offensive coaches on the Husky sideline. At what point do you take him out if he scored here? Do you, do you well, sit him? I, I don't think you want to expose him to any further injury. Phil Horvath has shown you that he's a quality backup for the first four games of the season. So Coach Novak ha has that luxury. We're going to hand it off again. And just short of the goal line is Adrian Davis. Rumble to the two. I, I would think that if they punch this in and go up 49 to 12, I think there's a very good chance to see Phil Horvath. And once again, this battle at the line of scrimmage has been owned all day long by the northern front five. Adrian Davis shows a little shake himself there, finding a hole. First and goal just outside the one. Adrian Davis, the single back set behind Haldy. They'll give Davis the carry. Davis! Well, he got him most of the way down there. You might as well throw him a bone and let him get the six. As you say, uh, not a real tall running back, but certainly a very powerful running back. Built low to the ground, and again, just great movement up front by that Husky offensive line. Van Acker, Lewick, Verstrady, three, all of them clearing a pass. That's his first career touchdown. Extra point. Dead solid perfect. It's 49-12 Northern Illinois. Adrian Davis pounced his way to the end zone. The Huskies in command. Northern Illinois. A lot of time left. 9.32 in the third. It's David Kaplan and Tom Waddle with you from Brigham Field at Husky Stadium and in there DeKalb, you see. Illinois. Bill Horvath warming up on the Husky sideline. You may have seen the last of Josh Haldy. I think that's a very good decision by Coach Joe Novak. And we're not going to refer to it as a stress fracture anymore because I'm having trouble with that. Josh Haldy with a bum foot, okay? That's easier for That's you. how we're going to refer to it from now on. It's easier for you. With the coming back from the bum foot, I think it's a good decision by Coach Novak to right. and I go to his sophomore quarterback. His medical turnaround to 12 foot with a stretch crack. Okay, thank you. There's the kick from John to the up end at the 20-yard line. And Akron will start with football right around their own 30. And we'll have a flag flying, I think, for some unnecessary roughness. A little extracurricular activity. It's called chippy time. With a 37-point lead. <laughs> Unnecessary roughness on Northern Illinois. So they'll mark it from the 30, move it up to the 45 yard line. First look at these. Over there, piling on, 15 yards, first down. Look at these scoring drives here. The first scoring drive goes 23 yards, one play, four seconds. The next touchdown, 47 seconds, just under four minutes. That's a lifetime today. 35 yards, 28 yards and three minutes and 31 seconds. Short and sweet would be a great way to describe that. And explosive, and explosive. Fry, under center. There's the wide receiver screen. Montgomery makes the catch and falls across the 50-yard line. Jason Hutt in on the tackle. You just saw a, a personal foul on the Northern coverage team. And those are the types of things that when you're done celebrating this win tomorrow, if you're the Northern football team and everyone's high-fiving, when you finally go out to the practice field for the Sunday night run, you run a little extra than was planned because the coach isn't happy with some of the mistakes that have been made in a situation like this. Brett Big handoff, and that's going nowhere. Brett Big dragged down. There will be a loss on the play. A pack of Northern Illinois Huskies led by Javen Lee. This is a play that absolutely goes nowhere. Ken West has just had a field day today with Mike Griskowiak, the right tackle for Akron. It's just been a mismatch. Chris Kowiak, 6'6 six, six and 315 with an obvious size advantage, but Ken West, very light, but very fast. Ken West, just a soft. Try going to throw. Try looking, Try going down in the arms 
to the feet. Brian Atkinson lights him up. Bringing up a fourth down, and Akron will have to punt it away. You see they have such flexibility with a guy like Brian Atkinson. He's got great speed. He's a middle linebacker, but you see he'll just find a path around the right tackle of Akron, and he's got the speed to get to Charlie Fry. And just Charlie Fry with nobody open. Dan Sheldon, the deep man. Standing right around his own 16 or 17 yard line. Bumble snap, no rush though on the punt. They'll get it away, and Sheldon's got it. It falls down at the 21. I think that's a, a rule in college football that needs to be changed when the knee hits the ground. You should be able to get up front. I believe so, yeah, I believe so. If you're not touched down. Joe Novak, one of the really good guys in college football has done just a whale of a job. If you don't know the history of this program, Joe came in here and it was buried and lost 23 in a row and then has completely reversed it, building a solid program, winning its 1A coach in Northern Illinois history. And just one of the truly class acts in college football. Wonderful guy. Bill Horvath is in now at quarterback and we do have yellow laundry. Blow the play dead. Phil Horvath, a guy that really did a nice job filling in for Josh Haldy over the course of the last month of the season. Had his best game as a Husky last week against Bowling Green. By the way, talking about coaches, J.D. Brookhart, as you see the penalty call there, J.D. Brookhart came here after being the offensive coordinator at Pitt. This is a guy that showed up in Denver wanting to get into the coaching profession after a six-year business career working at Xerox, among other places. Went up to Mike Shannon and said, I don't even want to get paid, I just want to learn the game. And Mike Shannon said, you can work training camp. Gets done with training camp, Shannon said, thanks, good luck to you. He said, I quit my job, I'll do whatever you need. And he stuck around, really for no money, learned the game from one of the best, shows you what a good guy Mike Shanahan is, and this guy has developed into a very fine player. Well, Brookhart was a standout wide receiver at Colorado State several years ago, and I think once bitten by the football bug, always bitten, always bitten by the football bug. So. Second down situation for the Huskies. And off again to Davis. Davis breaks the tackle. Davis knocked down at around the 27-yard line. Adrian Davis. He is a junior tailback, just 5'5". But as we were saying earlier, bench is more than 400 pounds. Now, I was not making light of that. And you suggested that I was criticizing the fact that he's 5'5". Five five and I wasn't giving him, him enough credit for a 400-pound bench press. But think about it. If you've got long arms, you've got to push the weight further. Still a tremendous if accomplishment. If you have long arms, you have a chance to have more muscle to make it easier to push the weight. I don't think that that's necessarily true. Horvath pressured, flips it up, and throws it out of bounds. And there's a good decision by a young quarterback, and that shows you what the four weeks he spent playing in, in, re, in place of Josh Haldy, some of the things he learned. When you don't have anybody open, just throw it away. And as I said at the top of the, the game, I think Joe Novak's got to feel great about his football team right now. He found out he had some depth at quarterback with Phil Horvath. He found out he had depth at the running back position with Garrett Wolf. And now you see Adrian Davis out there carrying the football as well. A good problem to have when you've got three guys who can run it, yet only one football. Punt is going to bounce down, and it hits Hickson, and it's going to roll out of bounds. So Akron gets a break. Nearly had a chance at a turnover for the Northern Illinois Huskies, who are in command by 37 points. So there's a lot of wind up there. It's been one disaster after another for Akron. Ball hits Hickson in the leg, and actually... They gain a little bit of yardage, and it rolls out of bounds at the 38-yard line. And joining us up here in the booth, you may have seen his interview at halftime, one of our dear friends, the basketball coach at Northern Illinois, Rob Judson, is with us. Hello, Judd. Good to be with you guys. It's a great day at Husky Stadium, it isn't is. it? Boy, the Huskies have an um, automatic pilot right now. We are uh, doing a good job scoring, aren't we? Unbelievable. <laughs> 
This is a team that's been able to have, as Tommy put it, a quick strike offense. Well, you get scores any way you can. Fry is going to keep it and run for about nine. I think that's where that mark this one down. How is the Husky basketball program? Great. Great. We had a good summer. All our players were on campus this summer. And uh, then we started uh, uh, official workouts here uh, back at the start of school in August. And uh, we've been doing that. Uh, we'll start official practice October 16th uh, with our Husky Midnight match. So maybe we can get you guys out. Uh, maybe Tom will come I've out. I've got quite a jump shot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, I'm still a little disappointed by the lack of time the NCAA allows you as coaches to spend with your it's uh, something that's uh, been put in front of the NCAA to allow us to spend more time. And, and I think with what we've seen from our Olympic basketball teams here, mm -hmm. uh, we're, the, we're the only place in the world where our basketball players, our college-age basketball players, aren't coached from May until the start of school in September. And, and around the world, they're, they're training and they're, and they're practicing uh, you know, 365 days to beat a year. Up. Absolutely. Well, and I'm not suggesting that they spend more time with the coaches uh, as opposed to spending time in the classroom, but certainly I think there are enough hours in the day so that you could spend more time with your athletes. Well, right now, for example, in the preseason, we're allowed to spend two hours a week uh, with basketball workouts, with individual workouts of no more than four players at a time. And what would be great is if we could do that with our players during the summer when they're here for summer school. Right now, we can't have any contact with them on the basketball court, just uh, with our strength coaches in the weight room. Now, what if an individual player, one guy, wants to come to you and say, Coach, I've got a free period, 11 a.m. every day. Can you come work with me on my shot? Are you allowed to do that? We can do that within the two hours a week right now we get two hours a week to do that so like for us what we'll do is we'll have uh, two workouts of 45 minutes each you know on, on monday wednesday and then uh, on friday a half hour uh, workout so we're, we're limited uh, very strictly by the ncaa how many hours we have still novak's football team right now has 20 hours a week uh, to work with them and one day off Speaking of Joe and his football program and the wonderful job that he has done, I imagine that it has created a great sense of pride throughout the university. And probably in some ways the residual effect is it helps recruiting for all of the sports. Well, it just raises uh, the level of uh, certainly our visibility for the university as a whole in the Northern Illinois area and Chicago area. Uh, you know, from your, from your experience as well at the collegiate level and in the high school level, when that football program does well in the fall, it sets the tone for the whole year. And uh, Joe's just been a great example. He persevered through some uh, lean years at first, did things the right way, and I tell you, he's got this team rolling right now. They are, they are a machine. And there's a sack on that play for Travis Moore, number 56. We also have a flag on the play. Well, Cap had great experience out here with uh, NIU basketball. I did. Back in the It's hard to believe. It's over 20 years. Ago. We don't talk about those years anymore, Cap. It's, it's not hard to believe when you see the gray in your beard and the receding hairline. I think it's easy to recognize that it's been 20 years. He's a funny man. <laughs> Huskies in command here. 49-12. It's a third and eighth situation for Akron. Fry from the gun. Looking, and he is going to go down again. It appears he escaped. Dragged down, and another sack. Ken West for the fourth time today involved us some mayhem on a quarterback. Well, we talked about Joe Novak's decision to replace Phil, excuse me, Josh Haldy with Phil Horvath, and I think J.D. Brookhart is coming to a point in this game where he may have to decide to pull his quarterback, Charlie Fry, very talented young man, but try to keep him from getting injured out there because it's been a jailbreak all afternoon, and as you see, he has taken a beating. He is a tough young man, and he is a great football player. But there comes a time where another you live, you live for another day. That one's going to go out of bounds. Right around the 15, 16 yard line. We'll see where they spot it. They will call it the 15 yard line. So 313 left in the third quarter. Northern Illinois 49 and the Zips of Akron 12. Tough day for Coach J.D. Brookhart. But there will be brighter days. He is in his first year as he tries to build a program. Rob, when you come in as a head coach, you came from Illinois to Northern Illinois and you had to rebuild. What's it like the first day in the office that you survey the situation and you go, 
I got some work to do here. There's a, there's a lot of things to do. There's no question. And uh, whatever whatever sport uh, you're in collegiately, there are always a lot of things to do. And you just have to prioritize and uh, try to uh, hire a good staff. Andrew, Andrew, Joe Davis has a terrific the staff. We have an outstanding staff here. A couple guys you know, Donald Whiteside and Carlo Amato, both Fuller, NIU graduates. Just added Rick Ray uh, from Indiana State as another assistant. And we have Sean Harrington, a uh, real uh, local guy who's done well with Bill White basketball and uh, is our director of basketball operations. So every day you just have to uh, be ready to work. It's an extremely competitive business, as you know, and uh, you have to do the best you can with what you have where you are every moment to be successful. I think teaching young men how to handle men and women, how to handle adversity is probably you know, the most difficult job for a coach in a new program. Well, there's no question about that. And, uh, the teams that can overcome obstacles, handle adversity, uh, turn setbacks into opportunities are the ones that move on and are successful. Adrian Davis on the carry, Chase Blackburn on the tackle. Well, thank you for coming up, spending a couple minutes with us. Great to see you guys. Always great to see you. Hope we can get you out again, Cap, to the Convocation Center for a basketball game. Uh, Tom, if you had some eligibility left, we'd put a suit on you. Now, Trust me, you don't want Is him. his record <laughs> spotless in terms of uh, calling the basketball games? That's one well. love. I think there's one. Yeah, I think just one. Cap, Cap always does well for us and uh, has a great feel for NIU athletics and NIU basketball. And uh, we just appreciate you guys being out here today for the uh, for the first broadcast. That's awesome. Well, we look forward to seeing you soon. Best wishes to your Northern Huskies. All right. Thanks for your time, guys. Thanks, Coach. That is Rob Judson, the very fine head basketball coach at Northern Illinois. His Huskies, a very solid program in the Mid-American Cup. 49-12. The, the Husky line. football team over the Akron Zips. A second and nine. Adrian Davis getting very extended playing deck. That's his first career touchdown They're today. They're some unfamiliar numbers out there on offense for the Huskies. Young guys getting an opportunity to play. Davis into the line. Gains maybe a yard. He'll bring up a third and eight for Phil Horvath. In and relief of Josh Haldy. A wide move by Joe Novak to sit him down with a 37-point lead. I agree. And I, I think that, as I said a moment ago, that Akron may do the same with their fine quarterback, Charlie Fry. Maybe not get to the midway point of the fourth quarter, but Charlie Fry has taken a bit of a beating today with a 37-point lead. He want to save his health. Horvath's going to throw. Horvath has it tipped and intercepted. Ball intercepted. And that one's going for six. Touchdown for Steve Ageman. Steve Ageman got the tip ball, picked it off, and took it to the house. Touchdown accuracy. Now that one's made possible by the sack where they hit on the quarterback as he threw it. So Horvath gets lit up as he tries to throw it. Dwayne LaFall, their top rush end, Jason gets to Horvath. The Unfortunately, he can't put anything on it. Ageman takes it in for six. Well, we've seen a passing TD or two today. We've seen rushing TDs. We saw a punt return for a TD. We've not seen a defensive score for a TD. And I think you will see Charlie Fry under center for the remainder of this game, probably now. 49-19, Northern Illinois. And there's another look at the play again. Ball just a dying duck up in the air after Horvath was hit as he threw. And Ageman takes it to the house. Well, give Akron some credit. The guys are still playing hard. It's been a difficult afternoon on both sides of the ball for the Zips. But as I said earlier, J.D. Brookhart wants to see his young guys, and it is a large group of young kids out there making progress and getting experience for the Every years to come. Every second is a teaching experience. No question. What a beautiful campus this is. As you get the view from up here in the press box, trees everywhere. It's just a beautiful setting. What a tremendous job they have done to make our experience more comfortable. The press box is beautiful. What an upgrade. And I want to believe that it's solely for us. No question. 
got Peter in here. We're in that little ground. box. We're right. <laughs> that's us. That's that us. us. Right there. And Northern Illinois is going to go back on the attack. And the lead has Lionel Hickenbottom. Yes, it is. He tried Looking to for a warm place to lay down. down. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to make it. Lionel Hickenbottom. Dominic Hickson in on the tackle. Does a nice job bouncing it outside. Nowhere to go up close. At this point, yeah, to the edge. Realizes that's about all I'm going to get. I might as well lay down. And remember, Lionel's a young man who's had some injuries in the past. So. We were here a couple of years ago. First game, of the first play of the first Wake game. Forest. Blew yeah. out his knee. It's Wake Forest. The fine quarter. I'd be very surprised to see Josh Haldy put it in the air. Excuse me. Phil Horvath put it in the air a whole lot from here on in. Hickenbottom is a guy, he returns kicks. We've seen him return punts. He is a free safety, to be exact. Uh, and a guy who is a hitter. We saw him make the first play of the game. Team leader. For a fumble. Team leader. He's just a really good football player. Yes, he is. All right, we're going to take a timeout, and then we'll have the fourth quarter. The Huskies in command by 30. dog pound as they like to affectionately call it here in DeKalb David Kaplan Tom Waddle and Jim Blaney and as you know howling the sideline as we went to the last break at the end of the third quarter Joe Novak had some harsh words for his offense he was upset Adrian Davis crashes into the line gains about three at this point you don't want to see anyone get injured and you want to just grind out time and run the clock, correct? Right. What a nice, long, sustained drive, running the football. You know, outwardly, Joe's very upset. Thinks his team is kind of relaxed. Relaxed a little bit. Inwardly, I believe he probably feels very good about the overall effort that his team has given today. But as a coach, you always want that expression on your face that you're not completely happy. Horvath dumps it for Adrian Davis. He's up the sideline. Adrian Davis out near midfield. Well, they've done a nice job. They've done an excellent job there, and they've done a nice job all day long. Freshman wide receiver Matt Simon out in front blocking as well as some of the offensive linemen. But it really has been a play that has gotten the best that accurate secondary. Horvath, a handoff again to Adrian Davis. He turns the corner and he is drilled. Let's grab a look at statistics from the first three quarters of tonight's game. Well, let me use my telestrator. That's an excellent one. You run it for 211 yards against this Akron defense. They were giving up 235 to start the game. Good balance, 191 yards through the air. Josh Haldy with three touchdowns. Good third down conversion for the Huskies. And again, look at the time of possession advantage for Akron. They've had the ball for almost 26 minutes, yet they trail by 30 points. It's been a quick strike offense. Yes, it has. The second ten situation. I think that's the best telestrator work I've done all day as well. You're kidding. Horvath, the handoff. Adrian Davis into the line right to the 50, and that's all he will get. Chris Brown in on the tackle. Chris Brown on the tackle. Clock is dripped under the 13-minute mark. Phil Horvath doing a nice job allowing the play clock to tick down as well. Northern 5 for 10 on third down and a 50% conversion rate. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. 
We talked about it at the start of the game. The one thing that this team is trying to do offensively every time they go out there is have a balanced attack. And once again, they did it again today. Over 200 yards rushing and close to 200 yards back. Horvath rolling, rolling, throws, looks for his man, and he's got his man. Real nice play. Do they call that a catch? Yes, yeah. they will. Be sure to David McDermott made the catch. 6'2", senior wide receiver. That's a John. good catch. Catching the football. No doubt about it. Third and eight, a four-yard route. It's not going to convert to third down. Yeah, a good decision. Good decision by Phil Horvath. I'm trying to force it into somewhere and throwing an interception. yard line for the second time today he is pinned back to deep inside the 10. 11.55 left. It's all Huskies by 30. They create game speed and these are valuable reps for guys who don't get a lot of chance to play. So there's only a limited amount of reps. A lot of them go to the starters in practice. So this is valuable time for guys who don't see a lot of time. Dave and Tom. Amen Thank to you, that. Amen to that. Brett, this, big. This is an opportunity for everyone on this Husky team, regardless if you're an offensive player or a defensive player, a chance to get some snaps, as Jim said, get some experience, and prove to your coach that you're a reliable backup. Brett Big picks up nine. Big's a well-known football name in Chicago area. Brad Big, a very fine football writer. Your friends pay you. Announce their names on the program. Fry sure. still in, hands off to Big, and Big falls to the 27. Hey, tonight at 10, get a complete recap of today in sports with a full hour of Jim Beam Sports Night on Comcast Sports Net. All the news, scores, and highlights, plus info you can't find anywhere else. It's Jim Beam Sports Night tonight at 10, only on Comcast Sports Net. First to ten inside 11 minutes left in the football game. Charlie Fry still in. Charlie Fry looking, looking. He's going to put the mare in this one. He throws it deep down the field, and it's incomplete. Incomplete. Jason Montgomery thought he had a shot at it. Hickett Bottom was there in coverage with Adriel Hansbro. Ray Smith, arm strength. Ray Smith was coming in for some help as well. Again, you've got to take these shots when you're trailing by 30, but Northern knows they're coming. Adriel Hansbro really has developed nicely over the course of this season. His brother Alva Hansbro also here in the Northern Illinois program. Second down for Charlie Fry and the Zips. Fry looking, 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 dumps it over the middle. And a gain of maybe six or seven to Jamari Arthur. It's going to be pretty hard to attack this northern secondary deep on the outside. Rob Lee came up, made the hit. Would expect Charlie Fry to try to attack this northern defense in the middle of the field with some underneath routes. Loosen things up a little bit. But again, he's got a pretty significant task, a task ahead of him, trailing by third. Third down and four. Fry looks, looks. Fry is being pressured again. And he throws it away. He's outside the pocket. There will be no grounding. But he is down. He is still down on the field. 
And I mentioned it earlier. I know that J.D. Brookhart wants to continue to fight and try to win this game. But Charlie Fry has been on the run all day long. Javen Lee, you see him there. Kirsten Strothman brings him down. That's a very valuable right arm and right shoulder. Sooner or later, the Akron coaches have to make a decision that he looks to be okay. I check him as he went to the sideline, and he looks to be okay. Just knows it's been a long, long day. Dan Sheldon still deep for Northern Illinois to return the punt. Drive it back to the 22, and he takes it. Fair catches. He's uh, had enough. We'll take the timeout. 9.37 left. Husky. Add to their win total. He doesn't look real vicious there. He is adorable. You're not a dog person. I am a dog person, but he he knows this one's firmly in hand. There's no reason for him to run up and down the field. You're not a dog person, because my little dog does it. He bit, bit me the last time I was in your house. Yeah, you tried to take the bone out of his mouth. I was just curious as to what you were feeding the dog, so I kind of reached to no, him. Instead of going, mm, let me have that. Tell Dudley. the folks at home what exactly a manly guy like you would buy in terms of a dog. Is it called a snickerdoodle, or what is it called? A golden a doodle. A golden doodle. That'd be half golden. Hey, Cap, uh, what kind of dog you got at the house? I have a golden doodle. I named him Sudley. And then you promptly, well, never mind, we won't go there. Had him neutered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I changed his name. It's Dudley. <laughs> I think we'll be invited back to Husky football after that. Adrian Davis. As the Huskies continue to churn up yardage and run clock. A lot of the crowd's still here. Good to see. Well, I'm not trying to get ahead of myself, but you and I talked about this at the half during the break. You look at the northern schedule and what remains. Chance to get on a run. Yeah, I mean, it is a, it, it, difficult opponents, yes, but they really do have an opportunity, I think, to, to have a, an excellent season. As you see, looks like Charlie Fry may have had enough today. It's going to give him a chance to rest. John Ferguson, you just saw on the sideline warming up. Adrian Davis, Adrian Davis is into the open field. Cuts it back and it's knocked down inside the 35. Big run. Jim Blenny talked about it earlier, an opportunity for some backups to establish themselves. Good vision. Once again, they've attacked the middle of this Akron front seven all day long. A tremendous cut from Adrian Davis. 44-yard run for Adrian Davis. Boy, they have just done a great job up front. Van Acker, Lewick, Free. Davis, 100 yards on the ground now. For Strady. Guys who don't normally get all the press, but this front five, the offensive line for Northern having a nice afternoon. Adrian Davis again, and he'll get to the 30-yard line. Actually, it looks like Northern has made some changes on their offensive line, getting some young guys some experience as well. You see the big guys. The big ugly. I like all the tattoos. Let me use the telestrator again. See all the paint? I missed it right there. If you're an offensive lineman these days, you have to have like the barbed wire tattoo across the top of the bicep. See, and I'm afraid of a flu shot, let alone get a tattoo. You've also bought a snickerdoodle for a pet in your house. There's a tattoo. There you go. Or See some, that right there? Some paint yeah, I just missed like it again. Paint. I think that's the hip way to describe it. You I'm not going to try to circle it again. I'm 0 for 3. So. You and hip are not the same set. Adrian Davis, and that will go nowhere. Absolutely I'm told nowhere. the fine Gino Vital on the play. The fine guys in the booth have just downgraded my telestrator average. Lost the five yards. You were a fine. This guy here is number 24. He's also wearing right there. That's the Lance Armstrong bracelet. 
the Livestrong bracelet that was so popular around the country. And they've done an excellent job raising funds for a wonderful cause with that as yes, well. Yes, they have. Third and 12, and that will go nowhere for the Huskies as well. And they have a new man in at quarterback, Zach Ulrich, six foot freshman, getting his first action as a collegiate. Ulrich in at quarterback, and you see him talking with senior Josh Halsey. And the Huskies and he said, don't do anything crazy out there to make me look bad. I think it'd be very hard to make Josh Haldy look bad today. Ulrich, three touchdown passes. They will go for it on fourth and 12. Tom. I'd be shocked to see them do anything crazy. dragged down the 40 yard line they will turn it over on downs we will take a timeout it's all huskies today here in decal north east okay and they've changed spots for it they also put last time we were here they had a little bit of trouble firing it they did they had to get the guy in the gray to try right. somebody that, that we we really trusted to go over there and fix it and they did a nice job correct <coughs> now what type of ammo is it the winning round right here i couldn't tell you i'm assuming they're blank Jaberry Arthur is now in at quarterback. We've seen him at wide receiver. They may be out of ammo after the Huskies scoring 49 points. As we talked about earlier, Jabari Arthur plays a lot at wide receiver as well. Arthur dumps it, finds his man, completes the pass to Dan Bash. Dan Bosch. Four forty left in this football game. The Huskies are going to improve their record to three and two, two and zero oh in the MAC West. Well, you look at what they've done so far this year. They started the season with a very disappointing loss to Maryland, twenty-three to twenty. They were actually driving in that game. At the end of the game, they were without. Uh, Josh Haldy in that one, Phil Horvath, his first experience as a Husky quarterback. They, they beat Southern in a tight game, lost a tight one to Iowa State, and then with a big one over Bowling Green. So, I mean, all side play here, by the way. They've played very well. They will be three and two at the end of this day. But I think Joe Novak, for the most part, very happy with three and two. Three and two, two and zero oh in the MAC West. Akron is going to fall to one and four, one and one in the MAC East. Next up on each team's schedule, Akron a home game with Buffalo next Off Saturday side. night. Defense. Also Number there in Illinois, Five yards. journey to the warm planet down. and play at Central Florida next Saturday evening. Both teams with 6 p.m. start Central Florida. Joe Novak right now wants his team to finish strong but also stay healthy in the final four and a half minutes of this ball game. Arthur going deep, tosses it down, and it is incomplete. Shaberry Arthur looking for Jamie Goodwin. Alva Hansbro was in cover. Covered from Alva Hansbro. Devron Francis was also there. Ever, overall, a lot to cheer about as a Husky fan and a Husky player or coach. Pretty complete effort today from Northern's team. Jarrell Winger, the ball carrier for the Zips. A lot of 
lot of guys on both sides happy with that play call. Keep the clock moving. No game in the play. When you get done with a football game like this as a player, tomorrow you go back to work. You put this one out of your mind immediately, or do you enjoy the big win? Well, I think you put it out of your mind after 12 hours, whether you win or lose. There's really no, no time to, to look back. Always have to look forward. I think that, that Joe Novak will point out a lot of the good things that have been done by his team today, but I think that there are some is, some issues that he will address with his team. So, needless penalty, the fact that his defense kind of lost their steam midway through the second quarter. I think JD. You know, I, I think that he's got a different approach. JD Brookhart. You know, he's got to keep his guys confident and say, hey, listen, we knew this was going to be difficult. We put a new program in on offense, a new program on, on deep, in on defense. But if you trust what we're teaching you, eventually there will be a payoff. Experience. Charlie Fry, this is his last year in the Acra program. Although you may consider it garbage time, it is an opportunity for him to become acquainted with the guys around him. And this guy over here, Charlie Fry, has nothing to be ashamed of. He's a talented player. He is. And the, and the scouts are very, very high on his potential. He just doesn't have a whole lot of help around him. Drip down towards the two and a half minute mark. Robert Wallace, a senior tailback, 208 pounds, 5'8, gets his first carry of the season. Some guys who don't get a chance to see game time, but certainly work just as hard as everyone else in practice. Absolutely, this is the a payoff. For some action. Chance for their parents and friends at home to Should buy a big pussy dog like I that. Have I have a chance for all the people at home to see their their kids and friends get an opportunity to play in Division One football game. I believe that was Adrian Davis on that carry, or was it Robert Wallace again? Robert Wallace had that carry. Doug Sutton. Part of a group on the tackle. Third and five for the Huskies. So it's kind of played out as we thought it would. Huskies very balanced on offense, attacking Akron through the air and on the ground. And we knew that the, the Zips were going to have a difficult time establishing the run, something that they've struggled with now through five games. Start, number 67 in the offense, five yards, still third. Zach Ulrich still in at quarterback for Northern Illinois. Spent last year as a red shirt. Every, every snap out there is a chance for him to learn. Again, I think that, that Joe Novak feels very good about Phil Horvath and his future. He's just a sophomore, had an opportunity to play significantly in the first four games of this season. And when he does turn this program over to Phil Horvath, when, when Josh Haldy graduates, this will have served as a great learning experience. And Ulrich completes the pass. It will be short of a first down. I'm sure there are people out there that, that are probably saying to themselves, especially Akron fans, why are you throwing the football with a 30-point lead? Got a are you rubbing it in? Absolutely. He's not throwing the ball deep. This is an opportunity for him to kind of get to the flow of the game and get a little bit of experience. And this will be the final play of the game. Northern Illinois will win this by 30, 49-19. Appears to be the final score. 
the fourth and one situation for Northern Illinois. They will hand the ball off to Robert Wallace, and I believe he will have picked up the first down. I believe the official is going to give him a, a very generous spot, considering the circumstances. That's exactly correct. That is a first down for Northern Illinois, and that will probably be the final play of our football game. Husky's going to let the clock run down. And that is going to do it. That is your final score. Northern Illinois, 49. The Akron Zip, 19. We are going to take a timeout. We'll come back, tell you a little bit more. Stick around. Comcast, 49. was what they set out to do, and that was to have great balance on offense. They ran it very successfully, 260 yards on the ground against an Akron defense that had been very soft against the run. Josh Haldy with a big afternoon, three touchdown passes in total. They throw it for 225, and Dan Sheldon with three touchdowns, over 100 yards receiving. A punt return for a touchdown, a complete victory for this Husky ball club. All right, our next telecast for Northern Illinois football, right here on Comcast, October 16th at 3 o'clock against Central Michigan. We will be with you then. You take the Michael Special K course at the great SID at Northern Illinois. Thank you to Sean Nestor, SID at Akron. Thank you to Jim Phillips, the fine athletic director, his staff, for our great crew here at Comcast Sports Set. For Tom Waddle, I'm David Kaplan. We'll see you on the 16th. Have a great night, everybody. NIU football is back for more in 2000. Good balance, 191 yards through the air. Josh Haldy with three touchdowns. Good third down conversion for the Huskies. And again, look at the time of possession advantage for Akron. They've had the ball for almost 26 minutes, yet they trail by 30 points. It's been a quick strike offense. Yes, it has. The second 10 situation. I think that's the best illustrator work I've done all day as well. You're kidding. Horvath to hand off Adrian Davis into the line right to the 50 and that's all he will get Chris Brown in on the tackle clock is dripped under the 13 minute mark Phil Horvath doing a nice job allowing the play clock to tick down as well Northern 5 for 10 on third down and a 50% conversion rate that's pretty good that's pretty good we talked about it at the start of the game. The one thing that this team is trying to do offensively every time they go out there is have a balanced attack. And once again, they did it again today. Over 200 yards rushing and close to 200 yards back. Horvath rolling, rolling, throws, looks for his man, and he's got his man. Real nice play. Do they call that a catch? Yes, yeah, they will. Be sure to David McDermott made the catch. 6-2 senior wide receiver. That's a good catch. Catching the football. No doubt about it. Third and eight, a four-yard route. It's not going to convert to third down. Yeah, a good decision. Good decision by Phil Horvath. I'm trying to force it into somewhere and throwing an interception. Inside the 10 yard line for the second time today is pinned back to deep inside the 10. 11.55 left. It's all Huskies by 30. <laughs> Thank you.
save on jeans at Blaine's Farm and Fleet, your denim headquarters with quality brands like Wrangler, Rustler, Riders, and Lee. For everyone in the family, you'll find the right jeans at the right price. When I'm pitching, I control the game. If it starts to slip, one little adjustment, and I take it back. Take control of the road in Mercury Mountaineer with four-wheel independent suspension and available all-wheel drive. And take control of your finances with 4,500 cash back or 0% APR for 60 months, plus a Weber gas grill at $600 value. Always bring the good stuff. See your local Lincoln Mercury dealer today. Welcome back to the Cal. A couple of things that Joe Novak has been reminding his offense about. Number one, you have to keep up the intensity because you know what? You're going to face 60-minute games the rest of the season. You better be ready to play. And number two, no matter how hard you try to duplicate it in practice, you can never recreate game speed. And these are valuable reps for guys who don't get a lot of chance to play. So there's only a limited amount of reps. A lot of them go to the starters in practice. So this is valuable time for guys who don't see a lot of time. Dave and Tom. Amen you, to that. Amen to that. Brett, this big. This is an opportunity for everyone on this Husky team, regardless if you're an offensive player or a defensive player, a chance to get some snaps, as Jim said, get some experience, and prove to your coach that you're a reliable backup. Brett Biggs picks up nine. Biggs, a well-known football name in the Chicago area. Brad Biggs, a very fine football writer. Do your friends pay you to announce their names on, on programs? Sir. Fry still in. Hands off to Biggs. And Biggs falls to the 27th. Hey, tonight at 10, get a complete recap of today in sports with a full hour of Jim Beam Sports Night on Comcast Sports Net. All the news, scores, and highlights, plus info you can't find anywhere else. It's Jim Beam Sports Night, tonight at 10, only on Comcast Sports Net. First to 10. Inside 11 minutes left in the football game. Charlie Fry still in. Charlie Fry looking, looking. He's going to put some air in this one. Throws it deep down the field, and it's incomplete. Incomplete. Jason Montgomery thought he had a shot at it. Hickett Bottom was there in coverage with Adriel Hansbrough. Hey, Ray, Smith, arm strength. Ray Smith was coming in for some help as well. Again, you've got to take these shots when you're trailing by 30, but Northern knows they're coming. Adriel Hansbro really has developed nicely over the course of this season. Got his brother Alva Hansbro also here at the Northern Illinois program. Second down for Charlie Fry and the Zip. Fry looking, 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 dumps it over the middle. And a gain of maybe six or seven to Jamari Arthur. It's going to be pretty hard to attack this northern secondary deep on the outside. Rob Lee came up, made the hit. Would expect Charlie Fry to try to attack this northern defense in the middle of the field with some underneath routes. Loosen things up a little bit. But again, he's got a significant task, a task ahead of him, trailing by third. Third down and four. Fry looks, looks. Fry is being pressured again. And he throws it away. He's outside the pocket. There will be no grounding. But he is down. He is still down on the field. And I mentioned it earlier. I know that J.D. Brookhart wants to continue to fight and try to win this game. But Charlie Fry has been on the run all day long. Javen Lee, you see him there. Kirsten Strothman brings him down. It's a very valuable right arm and right shoulder. Sooner or later, the Akron coaches have to make a decision that he looks to be okay. I check him 
as he went to the sideline, and he looks to be okay. Just knows it's been a long, long day. Dan Sheldon still deep for Northern Illinois to return the punt. Drive it back to the 22, and he takes it. Fair catches. Says, I've had enough. We'll take a timeout. 9.37 left. Huskies. Add to their win total. Applebee's new car side to go is here. Well, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, little darling. With car side to go, you can make dinner just by making a call. Let's go, let's go, again once more. Plus, we'll deliver the food straight from our kitchen to your car. Oh, pretty baby, I love you so. So try Applebee's new car side to go. It's not fast food, it's Applebee's food fast. Eating good in the neighborhood. Let's Don't miss the excitement of the Canadian Football League on Comcast Sportsnet. Nightly at 6.30, get ready for the night in sports with Sports Night on Comcast Sportsnet. We'll bring you the latest free game news and interviews you can't find anywhere else. Don't miss Sports Night, tonight at 6.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Want to be the winner in your fantasy football league this season? Comcast Sportsnet can help. Fantasy guru John Hanson will give you projections, sleepers, and all you need to stay ahead on Spotlight Fantasy Football. Thursday nights at 11.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Obviously, a wolf has broken out of the Brookfield Zoo. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the... Hus Victor E. Husky. That's right. He doesn't look real vicious there. He is adorable. You're not a dog person. I am a dog person, but he... He knows this one's firmly in hand. There's no reason for him to run up and down the field. You're not a dog person, because my little dog does oh, He bit it. me the last time I was in your house. Yeah, you tried to take the bone out of his mouth. I was just curious as to what you were feeding the dog, so I kind of reached to Dude, him. Instead of going, mm, let me have that. Tell the Dudley. folks at home what exactly a manly guy like you would buy in terms of a dog. Is it called a snickerdoodle, or what is it called? A golden doodle. A golden doodle. That'd be half golden. Hey, Cap, uh, what kind of dog you got at the house? I have a golden doodle. I named him Studley. And then you probably, well, never mind, we won't go there. Had him neutered. <laughs> yeah, I changed his name. It's Dudley. <laughs> I think we'll be invited back to Husky football after today. Adrian Davis. As the Huskies continue to churn up yardage and run clock. A lot of the crowd's still here. Good to see. Well, I'm not trying to get ahead of myself, but you and I talked about this at the half during the break. You look at the northern schedule and what remains. What a chance to get on a run. Yeah, I mean, it is a, it, it, difficult opponents, yes, but they really do have an opportunity, I think, to, to have a, an excellent season. As you see, looks like Charlie Fry may have had enough today. I'm going to give him a chance to rest. John Ferguson, you just saw on the sideline warming up. Adrian Davis, Adrian Davis. It's into the open field. Cuts it back, and it's knocked down inside the 35. Big run. Jim Blaney talked about it earlier, an opportunity for some backups to establish themselves. Good vision. Once again, they've attacked the middle of this Akron front seven all day long. A tremendous cut from Adrian Davis. 44-yard run for Adrian Davis. Boy, they have just done a great job up front. Van Acker, Lewick, Free. Davis, 100 yards on the ground now. For Strady. Guys who don't normally get all the press, but this front five... The offensive line for Northern having a nice afternoon. Adrian Davis again, and he'll get to the 30-yard line. 
Actually, it looks like Northern has made some changes on their offensive line, getting some young guys some experience as well. You see the big guys. The big ugly. I like all the tattoos. Let me use the Telestrator again. See all the paint? I missed it right there. If you're an offensive lineman these days, it's, you have to have like the barbed wire tattoo across the top of the bicep. See, and I'm afraid of a flu shot, let alone get a tattoo. You've also bought a snickerdoodle for a pet in your house. There's a tattoo. There you go. Or See that right there? Some paint yeah, I just missed like it again. Paint. I think that's the hip way to describe it. You I'm not going to try to circle it again. I'm 0 for 3. So. You and hip are not the same set. Adrian Davis. And that will go nowhere. Absolutely I'm told nowhere. to find Gino Vital on the play. The fine guys in the booth have just downgraded my Telestrator average. Lots of fun. You were a fine This guy here is number 24. He's also wearing right there. That's the Lance Armstrong bracelet. The Lipstrong bracelet that was so popular around the country. And they've done an excellent job raising funds for a wonderful cause with that as yes, well. Yes, they have. Third and 12, and that will go nowhere for the Huskies as well. And they have a new man in at quarterback, Zach Ulrich, six foot freshman, getting his first action as a collegiate. Ulrich in at quarterback. See him talking with senior Josh Halsey. And the Huskies. And he said, don't do anything crazy out there to make me look bad. I think it'd be very hard to make Josh Haldy look bad today. Oh, Rich. Three touchdown passes. They will go for it on fourth and 12. Tom. I'd be shocked to see them do anything crazy. running and he'll be dragged down at the 40 yard line. They will turn it over on downs. We will take a timeout. It's all Huskies today here in DeKalb. Have we got a matchup today? Casey's General Store and Coca-Cola are bringing you the Football Town USA Ultimate Tailgate Party Sweepstakes with prizes galore, including $5,000 for your favorite school and a personal tailgate kit at every Casey's General Store. Look for the Football Town USA Sweepstakes at Casey's General Store where you can pick up a free two liter of Coke with the purchase of any large pizza. Casey's General Stores, a convenience store, and a whole lot more. Introducing the redesigned 2005 Nissan Altima. You might call it an extreme makeover. We call it the 05 Altima. At $20,110, the Altima's never been more attractive. The stylish Altima at your Nissan dealer now. There's the cannon that they like to fire off here at they have North changed Illinois. locations of the cannon. It used to be on the other end. Kitty corner. Would that be the northern end? That would be the northeast. Okay, and they've changed spots for it. About what? They also put Last together. time we were here, they had a little bit of trouble firing it. They did. They had to get the guy in the parade to That's right. over and fix Somebody it. that we, we really trusted to go over there and fix it, and they did a nice job. Correct. <coughs> now, what type of ammo is that? The winning round right here. I couldn't tell you. I'm assuming they're blank. Jaberry Arthur is now in at quarterback. We've seen him at wide. Space. They may be out of ammo after the Huskies scoring 49 points. talked about earlier, Jabari Arthur plays a lot at wide receiver as well. Arthur dumps it, finds his man, completes the pass to Dan Bash. Dan Bosch. 4.40. 
minutes left in this football game. The Huskies are going to improve their record to three and two, two and zero oh in the MAC West. Well, you look at what they've done so far this year. They started the season with a very disappointing loss to Maryland, 23 to 20. They were actually driving in that game at the end of the game. They were without. Uh,